Hey guys, for some reason, you can't see me. Let's see here. I don't know why you can't see me, but do I really want you guys to see me? Because <laughs> I didn't plan on coming on today. Let's see if this works. That was it. Learn something new every single day, every single day. And you know, one thing I should know better by now is to not keep coming on here with rusty hands, sitting in a nail room, talking about nails <laughs> with rusty hands, right? So how is everyone doing today? I'm glad you guys have waited around because I didn't plan this. I was literally just lying on the couch there, taking a break, trying to figure, make myself <laughs> cook real quick and meal prep for a couple of days. So thank you so much for attending today because this was not planned at all. This is very impromptu. Very, very, very impromptu. So we have Victoria. Hi, Victoria. She's a regular. Angela Williams, hi. I think you're new. Angela, Natasha Rush, hi. And then Regine, she's becoming a regular. How are you doing, girl? As well. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Can you all hear me okay? Can you just let me know? Like, can you hear me? I just want to make sure because, like I said, this is very impromptu. Very impromptu. So can somebody just let me know, like, yeah, we hear you, you know, blah, blah, blah. We hear you. Let me go back up here to these comments. I'm not supposed to be drinking this, but I saw it and I, I had to get it. Whatever. I don't drink soda that much, so whatever. Nails by Deborah Lynn is here. Hey, hey, girl. And you all can't hear me. Kendall's here. Yes. Okay. So I don't plan on staying on here long because for some reason I am really seriously tired. Even though I've been getting in a lot of rest. Like I'm catching up on everything. I'm getting myself, you know in the mood for the next season to come and just preparing some things and working on some things. But, you know, I have all these great conversations all the time with clients, with my friends, you know, and just watching and just living life. Right. And it's just funny to me because I learn and see and I observe so much. So I know that one thing we did not discuss, <laughs> we did another six hour marathon. You guys, we must love what we talk about because we were on here again for six hours. And little do you all know, when I come online, I'm always nervous. I'm always nervous. I'm always nervous when my clients still come to a certain degree because I don't know. I, I just am. I just never know how it's going to turn out. So it's, 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 <laughs> it's strange, but we didn't get into it. So in that last live, we were talking about, you know, what time it is, right? And we were talking about tax season, but we got into two great case studies and we solve them or we got some next steps in place. So that's great. But what we want to do is really, really, really be focusing on what is coming next. And that's tax season. And we were saying how uh, in tax season, the, in tax season, you get a lot of random people. It's so easy to get new customers during, during tax season. Um, and I just want to make sure that you guys are, if you really say you want to do this for real full time, that you are setting up yourself to be successful. Because even though I do agree that you get a lot of random people, you can convert some of those people into actual clients. You know, you really can. And, you know, I still I have to do the shameless plug again, because if you really want to do it and, you, and a lot of that fear is coming from not really being able to see things clearly on how do you do it? How do you get to where that person is? How did they do that? Because this is not your field. This is not necessarily your arena from a business aspect. aspect it may be that from, you know, you think you're good enough technically, but not from a business aspect. So, you know, that is where the 30 day challenge comes in. It really does. You guys really might want to check that out um, it, because it's easy. But it's not easy. It's easy, but it's not easy. A lot of it is just our own fear and our own negative self-talk. But then we got the technical skills. But then it's like, what next? What's first? And right now is the perfect time to map out your plan 
and to actually start pursuing and making it happen, even if you're not licensed. You know, I advocate for being licensed, but, you know, I have also said I wasn't always licensed. Back in the day, it wasn't a big thing. So, you know, um, tax season is coming around. It's the perfect time to really go get new clients because people will have a lot of expendable income and they will be willing to spend money right about now and try something out because it's like a luxury that they normally can't afford. So you'll get a lot of people who, you know, will just come sit in your chair just because they got the extra income. So why this is the time where if you knew when you're coming into it and you're trying to get new people, why not capitalize on that? That's going to start. People are going to start reaching out and looking to see how they want to spend their money now, like in the next week, all the way up until the end of March or mid-March. They're going to be like, get the money. They're figuring out how they want to spend the money. They're going to be getting the money in February <laughs> and they're going to be spending it, spending it, spending it. And then right after that, we go into another season. So this is the perfect time to be doing that. <sighs> and. This is the reason why I decided to come on live really quickly, because I see some things that make me laugh. Because I tell you guys, everything goes in cycles and people are predictable to me. Um, Precious me said, and thank you for helping me see my fear so I can get it knocked out, knock it out. Yeah, you were like 10 years and everybody even saw that. But it's easier to see other people's stuff than it is our own stuff, right? So I'm glad you see that and everything is doable. It's just, it's really in how bad we want it. And then just with Sharina, somebody even came and put a comment up maybe like an hour or so ago saying that they hope that Sharina would see her comment because she was saying she was in the same exact situation as her and they're actually helping her to get enrolled in school. So it's funny because... um. It's so many people out here that think that their situation is hopeless or, you know, just just like, oh, my God, it's going to take forever. But really, once you start to not keep all of these negative thoughts within you, talking yourself out of it, you start really like reaching out to the right people or putting yourself in a good place and a good space with people with uh, what's the word? Putting yourself in a place with people who have the same goal and have no ill intentions towards you, then you'll see that a lot of people can help you see in perspective that you didn't. And, and also to see that there are other people in the same boat or even a worse boat, boat than you and they're making it happen. So then you start to laugh at yourself a little bit. Like I sounded silly. I, I really sound silly. I know. So I think this is a good, safe place. Um, I got a couple of things I want to say, but I'm trying to keep myself from bouncing all over the place. <laughs> See, Natasha said the same thing. She said, right, scared as hell, but I'm pushing forward. I keep telling you all, this ain't nothing but nails. We act like we're going to uh, do plastic surgeries. It's nails. It's nails. It's just nails. <laughs> it's just nails. Can you print the ebook? Yes, that's what people are doing. People are tagging me. Um, you can print the ebook. And what you do is when you print the ebook, out. A lot of people, I made a, a community post about this. You go buy you a binder, a three ring binder, and people are putting it in protective sheets. And one thing I liked about that idea was you can reuse it. You know, like you can really do this challenge as many times as you want. You know, if you just write it with like that dry erase marker and kind of write it in, but you got to make sure it's a fine point because that might be kind of hard to write on there. But yes, you can definitely print it out. And that's what a lot of people are doing. Like if you can print stuff at work, just print it at work. It is 100 pages and it's 100 color pages. So <laughs> keep that in mind. But it's 100 pages. So I don't know how you want to do that. But if it's at work, do you care? I don't know. Do you care? Do you care? I don't know. So it's a couple of things I want to say. Y'all want me to say it? Okay, I'm going to say it. Posted on the community board. Why do you all sit here and let me drink all this tea? Knowing that we and then, you know, it's OK for like a 30 minute session. But do we ever do 30 minute sessions? Hell, we're at 15 already almost. And I realized like the next day, like Tanisha, you were sitting there sipping and sipping and sipping and running to the bathroom and sipping for five or six hours straight. So by the time I stand up to go put everything back, put my laptop up and put the lights up, I'm like, whoa. <laughs> And then I go back and watch some of the videos. I'm like, girl, you was on there being a, a 
whole food. It's okay. It's okay. I'm an open book, you know, but some things I'm like, I hope I'm not, you know, um, giving TMI, but I just, I like to be transparent because I want people to know that I am the same as anyone else. And I've been through everything that some other people can be through, have gone through. Like I, I know I said in that live at some point, if you stayed on that long, I talked about being an exotic dancer. Yes, I did. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm going to do a whole story about how I became one. I, I told you I didn't did everything. I know I said that. I know what I be saying, but I'm just like, oh, my God, was that an overshare? I don't really care. I, I just don't really care because it's so many different people from different backgrounds. I'm always I might be helping someone. So for you, it might be like, I would never clutch in my pearls. But for the next person watching this live, it's like, OK, OK. No, I'm not that person because people misjudge me all the time. And I'm hard. I think I'm kind of hard to figure out because I've been like I said, I've done a little bit of everything, you know. I, oh, I said on that live too. I used to be a little drug dealer. I think I said that. That's true too. Back in the day, I call myself being a drug dealer a couple of um, a few occasions back then. <laughs> all kind of stuff. But guess what? All I was still in the hotel tech. It's so crazy. But um, I just want to say, you know, please forgive me on these lives. You got to keep in mind that although you may only watch thirty or forty minutes of this live. I'm on here the whole time, yip, 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 yipping. And instead of having some water to sip on, I'm just constantly picking up my my cup drinking. You you see what I'm saying? So it's just like, Tanisha, you got to stop doing that because they ain't be kind of drunk, you know? And when we talk, when you're vlogging, you got to constantly drink something. Always, always, always. So that's that. And then... Let's see. Chrissy said something to you, Precious Me. She said, Precious, you can print it. She printed hers in an eight and a half, well, eight by 11 and put the, the pages of plastic protectors in the notebook. Right. Exactly what I said. So you could definitely do that. And you see Natasha over here and Natasha over here uh, laughing at me, talking about be you, be you. He, 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 he. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I'm telling you, I will be me, you know. If you watch this channel, if you watch enough videos, you know that I say what it is. And people either love me or hate me. Even, even in real life, people either love me or they hate me. And then I got people that pretend to love me because I haven't done anything to them, but they secretly hate me because I'm me unapologetically. And you know, all these memes and stuff, that's one thing. But I really, I really live that life. Like, I'm going to be me. I'm not hurting you. So I'm going to be me. I'm sorry if it bothers you. And it bothers some people. And um, just like, we're going to go to the top here. Um, oh, It's not here. But who is that? Who just said that they were like, my teacher is back. And she's been, um, this teacher has been bothering her. And the teacher is back in class. And my whole thing is, it's like, yeah, I told her a long time ago in the lab. I said they might be they might be bothered by you. You're not doing anything to those people, but you're not conforming to their clicks and stuff. You're not jumping in their clicks. You're not jumping on the bandwagon trying to be everybody's friend. So they are going to be polite enough or some type of way towards you because you're not a conformer. You're not a follower. I, but I told her how to. If you go, it's an old lab. But I was like, really, if you break it down, you play this the right way and act unbothered and be focused on what you're doing. After so long, they're going to be trying to like befriend you. <laughs> so I've never been a follower. I cannot. Oh, I cannot. No, I cannot. <laughs> um, hey, girl. Haters always going to hate. Don't let them bother you. You and your channel has helped me a lot. Yes. Yes. I'm so glad. I am so glad. And that's, that's my whole purpose in being here. So um, that's my whole purpose. And you guys, I want to be an example to you. I'm not, you know, some people just build this brand. You know, they build this brand and this image. And if something starts to work and they get a little bit of clout, they go with it. They run with it. And that's not even who they really are as a person. So let's get into that. This is something I bought this week because I'm listening to you guys. And I want to make this channel, even though this is just the beginning of this channel, I bought this. So now I'm going to actually be able to, when I'm working, you can, it's going to be right front and center when you're working, because normally it's, it's going off this light right here, but I needed something that had my my phone straight like this when I'm when I'm working. So I'll be able to work and you all will be able to see. Now, when that's going to happen, I don't know, because, you know, a lot of it depends on the client. Not everybody wants to be recorded. And then sometimes, well, most of the time, most of the time, my day is too 
back to back to back to stop and do all this. But I do have it here and it's at the table. So when I want to film, I'll be able to do it. <sighs> I'll be able to do it. And then sometimes when I'm doing my nails, maybe sometimes, what do you guys think about this? Sometimes when I'm doing my lives, I'll just use this and I'll just like, I need to take off this note chip and um, I need to take off this note chip and redo it. So maybe I'll just do one of these lives where I'm not necessarily showing you anything, but I'm just like, I'm talking to you now. I could be knocking out two birds with one stone and, <laughs> and you know, doing my own, my own nails and talking to you. This, this thing right here, I got it at the flea market by my house. I'm right by the flea market. So I got this and they have them everywhere. You can probably find them on, there's so many different kinds. So I was trying this one to see, I haven't tested it yet to see how well it's going to hold. But I got this one at the flea market. You might want to try like on Amazon or something. Um, now I got to put it back. <laughs> okay. Let me tighten it back up. Yeah. So. See, Chrissy says she did the same thing. She's talking about the book. She printed her book out too. So thank you, precious me. And you said you like that idea a lot. Okay, so cool. I got that. And I'm always trying to get new things. Every week is something I'm investing in to try to see, you know, what's going to make things better. So you all ready to get into why I came on here today? It's been a couple of things bothering me, but I said I don't want to be nagging too much. <sighs> Seriously, here's the first thing. And I, I don't want you all to get upset. I just, I got to say this. It's, it's my job here. We are all over the place, all over the place, all over the place. How do I know? Because I watch everything. I see things and I am so happy that people are getting this book and watching these videos and all of that. And we come on these lives and we're having these great discussions about things. And I see some things that people are doing and they're doing none of the things that they say they're going to do. Is that true? I hope it's not. I will never say anybody's name, but I have someone who's, you know, making all these, uh, they're, they're not just one person, a couple of people I've seen writing all these notes out and they're doing it and everything. And I'm still looking at their social media. They're not implementing anything, anything. You know, a lot of the times we buy things and we get excited while we're buying them. We're excited. We got to save up the money to get it. We get it. We play with the toy, like even like the kids do. They play with the toy for, for a couple of days and then they put the toy down. They pick up a little bit and they play with it because it's still a little fun to play with. It's exciting still. It's still new. And then before you know it, it's over there with all the other toys. And I do not want this tool to be that for you guys because I'm seeing a lot of people. They haven't changed anything about the way that they're doing things at all. Yet they are doing their, they're saying that they're reading. They're making all these notes and all this stuff. And I'm just like, it's nothing, it's, it's, it, it, there's nothing in here that's like super hard. It's very straightforward, but a lot of us are not doing it. And I think that that brings me to what I've said before. I think some people like to feel like they're doing something because the fun part is buying the supplies. The fun part is buying the nail table. The fun part is playing on my cousin and my sister and my nails and buying more colors. That's the fun part. We feel like we're moving towards our dreams because we did the fun part because that part was fun, right? That's the fun part. Even with the book, buying the book is fun because that makes you feel like you're moving towards moving towards the right direction in which you are. But I'm not seeing people implement and actually do the work that the book is asking people to do. Give an example. Okay, I'll give you an example. I'm going to give you a really simple example. And er this, is, this is for everyone. In the book, it speaks of the importance of somebody book, the importance of hashtags. In the book, it, it has a whole section about hashtags, 
the importance of them in depth, samples of them, why, percentages of what you should be doing, how it should be placed, where it should be placed. And I know for a fact that some people have had their book and their information long enough to get to this information because I'm seeing them. I have proof that they're doing it. They're, they're you know, reading this stuff. Yet their social media is the exact same. They haven't done anything. It's not even a business page. No hashtags whatsoever. Hashtags still are irrelevant to what they do. Hashtag, I did that and I said that in another live. I'm just using that as an example. Do put some nails up way back here, way back here, and say, hashtag, I did that. Come see me today. Tell all your friends. That's an example. You, you get what I'm saying? Same way that, that same, those same people were doing it before. You cannot even tell that they didn't, they they read this material and absorbed this material because they haven't implemented any of it. Any of it. Everything looks the exact same. Yet what I am noticing is that these people are putting up more material, but they haven't done anything to set it up and run it like a business yet at all. And it's step by step. One, do this, do this, do this. At the end of the week, sit down with your accountability accountability partner and make sure that you did everything. And maybe, you know, you need this person to critique you or stay on top of you. And um, I, they cannot, people cannot be doing that all the way. Let's be honest here. And that's not what I want. And this is going to take me into another story because that is, I promise you, that is not what I want. I can sell anything. Um, a lot of you all don't know this, but I've been selling online for years. I have a store I have stores on wish.com. I have a store on Winello. I have a store on Amazon. I have a store on eBay. I have stores all over these platforms already. I sell everything from um, <laughs> tractor trailer plow bags, um, work boots, work shoes. I sell all that stuff anyway. So I don't need to come here and con any. I'm not saying you're saying this. I'm just saying I'm not coming here to con anyone. To make them buy my product because I sell everything because I am a professional drop shipper and you can drop ship. That's a whole nother channel. <laughs> I can professionally drop ship anything I want. So I didn't come here to make all this money off these books like that because my goal was like, I feel like my talent, my real God given talent since I was, I was a kid was to be a nail tech. And because I'm getting older, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to start to back up because I do nails, but I just want to kind of close my books eventually and do my regular, regular schmegler people and then just be a teacher, consultant and kind of like, a, um, you know, like an impressionable person in the industry, an influencer in the industry. So I'm doing it just to kind of ease my way into it, to put out some base material because there's so much to learn. And then I can eventually start to teach people other things such as salon ownership the correct way you know or mobile business the correct way how to create your own product line because you all know that i'm a brand manager as well and i worked in beauty products meaning i've created a lot of products so i know how to do it from conception to one shelf even in how to get it into stores i have those connections so i'm saying that's my future goal is to take some of these people that are really serious Help everyone at the base level, but eventually get these people who are really serious and they're already where they're supposed to be as a nail tech and then then take it up a notch further. Hey, I have advanced classes. I have advanced training. I have an advanced this that I'm doing in Kentucky on this date. And it's a boot camp for these people that want to do this, do that. And so I said, you know what? I'm noticing something here. So I want to come back and see where we're hitting are we hitting some walls? Is there something that I'm missing? Are there some questions that people may have, you know, whatever? Or are we just dealing with people who are just by nature in life all over the place or by nature in life, just really scared to pull the trigger? Because I, I made it as simple as I could. It's not even it's not even that deep. It's really the book is not that deep. It's just step by step. You know? So that was my example. And you said you got to get this. You don't have it. 
Okay, well, it's at Chicago. Oh, it's at the bottom right here. Chicago, I forget that's down there. I'm just so used to it. Chicago Beauty Source. It's right there and you can do it hard copy or digital. Yeah. And let's let's keep going. Wait. So I'm going to say this too. There is one part. No, there is more than one. But I'm telling you, I see some people that have, have purchased this book and I follow their social media. And even if I don't, I know who's who on social media. And I go in and I peek. And I'm like, they're not doing anything. They're not there. The page look is the exact same. Still putting up pictures of their kids and stuff. And, you know, they picture their personal family life, piece, slices of pizza and stuff like that. And then one nail picture way back here somewhere. You can't even see the work with no hashtags. It's not a business page. It's so many things. They haven't done anything. I'm like, you know, we got to be careful because just like a lot of things, we sometimes get caught up in the in the buying of things and the buying of things. And I'm like, is there something I'm missing is there something I'm missing here? Let me do a check-in. Let me do a check-in here. But I know that just from doing further research and understanding people, some people are just like that personally in nature with everything and they're all over the place. Some of these people, I'm also seeing that if I scroll down five five rows, they also sell at Avon. I scroll down another row, this person is, um, hell, I don't know, um, doing Mary Kay and Avon. I'm just giving examples. You know, scroll down a little bit more. This person is starting their first day uh, in in training to be a real estate agent. And then I've scrolled down a little bit more. This person um, braids kids hair and she has a flyer up for that. So now she braiding kids hair. She is school for real estate agent. Um, <clears throat> what else did I say? What was the other career she had? Oh, she's a Mary Kay specialist and she sell Avon too. And then now she's being a nail tech. She done went on about this book because she thought the book was going to make her nail tech just like poof, in and out of the air and nothing's getting done. And see, the, and then when I see it, I'm like, okay, that's not me. That's them. That's what they do. And if I came back to that person's page in six months, they probably will have some advertisement of saying that they're a goat herder. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> I'm like, I wish I could take everybody and just take the, those people because I know that those people want to do it, but some people just straight up got ADD. And I want to take them and shake them, hug them and shake them, shake them and hug them, shake them and hug them. Because I'm like, you are not going to get anywhere all over the place like this. You cannot. It kind of frustrates me because I'm like, I didn't want you to spend this money to sit up here and read this book and be excited for a week and put the shit down. That is not. Because that, that money you spent was gone. That money you spent, I probably just reinvested and bought another lighter or paid for a consultation to learn something or put it towards something, you know, with my business or whatever. It didn't change my life. My life has already changed and going in the direction I needed to go. So that wasn't the purpose. I hate when I see that. So I'm going to keep saying that. I think my IG is good, but I'm not attracting clients. I don't know. What I'm doing wrong. I'm only in week one of the book, so maybe I just need to wait until week three or four. Uh huh. You know, week one is just more so understanding what it is you do and understanding your strengths and weaknesses and stuff, and really sitting down and taking a deep dive into that. Because you'll see as you go along. Once you, did you really sit down and do the thought of that, or did you just sit and say, hmm, "I like reds. I like the polish. I like to do designs. That's on designs, designs. You know, this is that first week is like, no, sit down and figure out who you are. Who your clients are, who, um, who you want, because you no business can start without having a target, you know, a target, a consumer target. Who are you targeting? So that's just that, and who you are, and who you want to be as a nail tech. So that's what that is all about. Um, and then also, are you just doing this book by yourself, or did you get your accountability account? I don't know why I keep using that word. I should say reliability. <laughs> I can say that easier. Did you get your partner, that person? who can really, or that aunt or that uncle or that cousin who's like more of a serious, stern person. Like if you really want to do it, that's the person you need. Not your friend per se, the person who's going to be on your butt and have a real conversation. Like you're sitting down at a business deal. Like you're about to sign your name on a mortgage. Like that that person you go to to make some real life decisions, get that person to be your person that you discuss this with every week because you know how that person is. And so... They're going to be like, OK, don't waste my time on this now. But if you come into them, they, you, you're you going to know that, that person expects you to really do it because they don't do nails. So they're a business person. They're a serious person. 
So they're going to be like you're like in Weight Watchers. You know, you got to go way in. That skill don't lie. So get that person who doesn't lie to you. OK. But once you get more into it, yeah, because there's some major things that need to be done. And um, yeah, I can help everyone. But if you're not attracting clients, um, yeah, if you're not attracting clients. I could definitely probably just point to you. What's your wish? Your, you might not want everyone to know your IG. If you don't, Email me at Chicago right now. Email me at Chicago at Yahoo.com with your IG. And I won't say it out loud, but I will do a quick critique. Okay. Okay, Chrissy. Just email me at Chicago.com right now. If you want to come on live, you can email me and I can bring you in. If not, we could do it right here. You send me that. I'll take a look at it on my phone and we could do it in front of everyone. I will not say it out loud if you don't want me to. So people won't be able to go and put it in their two cents if you don't want to hear what everybody got to say. I get that too. <laughs> okay. Precious Me said, see, this is nice. She's checking up and making sure we stay on the right path. Yes, because man, y'all, we had 35 minutes. See how that goes. Um, like I said, it's a lot of people out here that are just making sales. Let me tell you what has happened in the beauty industry and the internet in the past couple of years. So some people have good intentions. Some people don't. I can't say who does, who does not. But what happens is the social media thing, everybody's a boss. So everybody's creating brands. Everybody's putting their brands up. And, you know, everybody Google, everybody master, everybody checking the bag, check the bag, the, the guy to this, the guy to that, you know. And um, some people are just jumping on a wave and throwing out some information out there just to quick make a quick sale. They're putting all this money into these fancy photos. Man, this is real talk. Putting all this money into these fancy photo shoots and things like that. And you get the product and it's not even all that. And there's a big wave of that happening. Um, when I used to work in hair care, the hair care company, it was a few of the handful of them in a nutshell that really blew up. And so now there are some other girls, I will never name names, who have jumped on the bandwagon and they've gotten in on that pie as well. And so then now we're seeing more and more people try to jump in on it. But to be honest with you, they've kind of missed the wave. But I'm just going to sit back and watch it happen because there are only so many hair products on the market. There are so many. You know, everybody's making a new promise. This hair product is going to do this for now. We're talking about the natural hair care movement. This hair product is going to do this. It, 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 it's all the same, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but a lot, do you think all these people really care about growing your hair? Well, they saw that this company, I won't say no names, just became a multimillionaire. So they're about to come up with an even cuter bottle and do exactly what she did and call it something else so they can get some of the millions too. I ain't mad at them. But it's going to all, it all hits a, a a bubble, you know, it bursts at a certain point because it's only so much, so many products that can be shoved down a consumer's throat claiming to do the same thing. It's only so many. It's only so many millions of dollars that can be made. So that's what's happening with the hair care company. I'm, I am going to say a few big brands. We're going to say like your Shea Moistures. We're going to say um, who else? Shea Moisture. Oh, God. Uh, uh, Carol's Daughter. Shea Moisture, Carol's Daughter, uh, Mixed Chicks. Those were like three that really, really stuck out mainstream. And there were those before them, but those are the ones that really like took the market like, wow. And so then all these other smaller brands started coming in. They started picking up some of the pieces that was falling from all that overflow from them. And now we're seeing is that a lot of people, it does like that. It's, it has peaked already. It has peaked already because I used to work in the peak is gone. You know that um, Miss Jessie's. Miss Jessie's and all of them. I don't did I say no? You know, Miss Jessie's, they were they're the top dogs. I was spending $58 for a, a jar of hair cream at one point. But then if you notice, we know we're coming off the peak because Miss Jessie's, I pay attention to these things because that was my field. Miss Jessie's had to create a line extension off of their original line, and they had to make more affordable knockoffs of their own brand. You know why? Because they the peak was coming down and there were too many other entrants into the marketplace. So they had to remain competitive. And so they had to knock off themselves and come out and use their brand, their brand stock on shelf to say, well, hey, we can't lose our stock, our shelf space, you know, to these cheaper brands. So we're going to knock ourselves off and make a, a more affordable line of hair care products. 
the hair care industry is something else. It's a beast. And it's a lot of people still trying to, I'm using, I'm going somewhere with this. Um, a lot of people trying to still jump on it. I ain't going to say no names, but they don't know. They really, they really kind of at the end of it. Because to be honest with you, you really a real YouTuber and you watch some of these real influencers with natural hair. A lot of them are going back to relaxers. So the natural hair care industry as a whole, it's kind of, it's there. It's going to always be there. But some of the major influencers who went natural are like, I can't do this anymore. It's too much work. And they're relaxing their hair live on TV. Like, I, I did it. I did it. <laughs> they call it text laxing now. I say all of that to say. I say all of that to say. This one thing here. I wonder if you all know where I'm going with this. Nails can do and is, is doing the same thing to, to a certain degree. We have these major nail companies that have always been out, such as OPI and all of them, um, you know, gel polish companies and all of that. But since the designs were have come right back on the market, it created an opening for a lot of people to become popular. It created an opening for a lot of people to become influential because of their design skills, you know, whatever. That's nice and all, and I've said this before in other lives, but seriously, my numbers are not big. They prop, they'll get big if I keep doing what I'm going to do, but I really want to help people. You know what I'm saying? And I'm, I'm probably the, one of the oldest people in the, in one of the oldest people in the marketplace, like one of the oldest that are still straight up doing it at for a living. And I'm not here for the cloud. I ain't doing it for the cloud or anything. Money will come, but I really want to help people because I know that money has always come my way naturally because I'm organic in what I do. I'd rather have my money come in slowly but steady than get rush, rushes and waves of money based off of trends because that fast money always go fast. And if you watch people who constantly, they may be popular or whatever, but their fast money comes and it goes because they're riding trends and they always need to find a way, a new trend to jump on. See, I watch brands, I, especially these small mom and pop brands. They do good. They, they make all this money. They show you, I'm making all this money, making all this money. But then it's always something, they got to do something else because it was trendy money, trendy money. And there is a difference, you know, and trendy money. Yeah, you made all this money and trendy money, but let's not, let's not forget that the numbers that people flash, first of all, are gross numbers and not net. And then they have to reinvest. And then you got to come up with something else and you got to invest into that fancy marketing and stuff all over again. So are they really making as much as they want you to believe? It's, a lot of it is hype, you guys. <laughs> and I'm a salesperson myself, but I seriously am a nail tech. And my real goal is to not see this industry be torn to shreds and watered down because it's already become watered down. You're going to be seeing some other books come out. Watch. Because people watch. And you could, people can watch all they want. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's all I had to say on that. I watch the industry and um, I really want to help people. So uh, don't, don't think that because oh, I got her book sale. I'm done with you. I don't want to talk to you no more. I'm not. I'm going to start ignoring your comments now. No, because that's just the base information I felt like I should give out. And I'm still on here answering questions. I'm still doing consultations. You need help purchasing product. All of that. I can help you. Yeah, I'm a for profit business, but I'm really for for a career. I'm a, I'm a for career nail tech for others. It's money out here for everyone. But really, I want to help these people that say they want to do it. I, that is, I'm, I cannot be more transparent with that. So N Natasha says she started her, she started her page yesterday. Okay, cool. Good. Did she email me? Let me look through these comments and see, did she email me? Oh, somebody just bought a book. Cool. Um, well, it looked like a book. Congratulations, you got the hard copy. We'll get that right out to you. Wait, is this your, okay, you say you don't mind if they see. Hi, Kimberly. So this is your Instagram? Let's pull it up, let's see. 
you really ready for the truth, truth, truth? Because you can look at you all can look at my page and see that I only have like 2,600, maybe close to 2,700 followers. But don't be fooled by all this clout and this fake, these fake glitters and stuff everywhere. You know, all the glitz and glams and things because I'm a full time nail tech paying all my own bills, with no husband, anything. And I never did put up my vacation video. And I told you why, because it, I think I made it too long with too much editing on there and it crashed. Then I got lazy and I never got around to it. I got to do that too. But I still go on vacations and everything. Honey, don't, don't, don't think it's not possible. See why? And I don't live with my parents or anything like that. I don't have roommates or anybody taking care of me. I don't have any of that. You want to come on screen? I'll just glance at it. I'm like, oh, there you go. You guys, I'm looking. I'm really tired. Um, let's see. I'm still looking. Are you all looking? You can. She said she didn't care. I'm looking still. Is this sure you're pretty? Hmm. Okay. I'm not going to scroll anymore. Okay. So... Let me go back through these comments because I don't want to get too out of hand before we get into this. And I hope I wasn't too long-winded with what I had to say. I wanted to be transparent with what I had to say without throwing anyone in particular under the bus. But know that I'm really here. I'm here for it. I know some people, some people are really about that green and they they not really there for it like that. They're about themselves and they they they're not there for you. But I'm telling you, I'm here for, I'm here, of course, I got to live, but I'm really here to help people. I want to be on more videos crying. I want to be, y'all don't know, I see certain things and I'm like, yes, I want to, I want people to make me straight up cry. I want people to make me choke up. I want people to make me catch the Holy Ghost from being so happy. You know, like that's what I want. That's my money. That, that's, that's better than a big check to me because that'll come. Precious me said, I just landed on the IG name. Now I got to get my book and office ready. Looks like a storage room at the moment. Girl, that's why I'm trying to get another place because I am busting out of here. I am busting out of here and I can't even set up. I and mean, it's, it's important to really make sure you have a good Zen space. I'm not happy where I am now. I'm just making it work for me. But it's a good thing because I have to make it work because this is how I make my money. And it's forcing me to move forward. If I was too comfortable here, I wouldn't be pushing as hard. You know, and then Precious saying hey to you and y'all saying hey to each other. You don't think personal stuff should be on the business page. It, it, it can be on there, but it needs to be on there the right way. Okay. Nope, she and Dominia. That's what we're about to do. We're about to do it right now. We're about to do a walkthrough on this page really quickly. Ventilation is always needed. Robin. Hi, Robin. Definitely getting the book. I start my classes tomorrow. Everybody give her some type of emoji or something. That, well, too many emojis. You might. I don't want you to get flagged, but say, hey, congratulations or something. It's because YouTube has this weird thing with emojis, so... Emojis and comments. I think they the computer or the analytics reads the spam if you do too many of them. So, but congratulations. She starts her classes tomorrow. She's super excited. Should she start reading the book immediately or wait until I am done with my course? No, do it immediately because this is all about setting up your okay. So this is about setting up your brand. 
but you, some of it you may not know right away because you're still trying to figure that out. But it's really kind of getting your mind. It's good to start it right away. That's what I'm going to say. It depends. Do you already do nails? Because just because you're going to school, some people have already been doing nails for a couple of years. They just decided to make it legit, you know, but it's really good because like the logo portion of it, you can start all of that now figuring out what you want that to look like, you know. So definitely I dropped it. <laughs> definitely. Definitely. Ah, Y'all, I'm still sore from that workout idea. And I think I'm going tonight. I am sore. I hit that leg press machine so hard. I think I hit it too hard. Okay, I'm just catching up on this. I really thought about it. It took me all day. I did realize the type of nails I do on me is not what I want to do on everyone all the time. I also got Tina Tequila as your partner. Okay, cool. So you realize that. Okay. So let's just do this. This is an update from my last six hour live. Sharina, and somebody left you a comment too about two hours ago. They said they hope you see it there in your exact same situation. They said they're. They're her people were helping her to get in school and she's just in the same situation as you. You said you called two schools on Monday and set up appointments to tour the schools. <laughs> see, I'm so so I can't cross my leg. <laughs> you see that? Because I was like, who told you this? You couldn't even answer. You had a look on your face like. You talking to me? Yeah, you who told you you couldn't do that? <laughs> no one. Your inner brain told you you couldn't do it. See, just that fast, not even 36 hours, boom, tour set up. When you go set up, you talk to these people, they're going to work with you. They're going to work with you. Ow, done already. So, somebody said they just followed you. So, let's take a look at this page real quick. What? And let me put in this disclaimer. What I say is not 100%. This is just what I see at first glance. Someone else may give you a totally different opinion. This is just what I see in my experience on social media as it relates to nails, okay? In looking at your page, it's not a business page. Is it? Is it a business page? I don't think it is. doesn't look like a business page. Maybe it is. I don't think it is. But... One thing I did notice, little things like this. See, it's not the things you see with your naked eye. It's really in how your marketing is coming off to the psyche of a potential client. So in looking at this, Chrissy, Chrissy Z Nails LV. Okay. It says, lover of the bling and color. But I'm just scrolling through your page real quick. Your, your pictures don't reflect that. So are you just randomly saying that you like bling? Because I don't really even see any bling. I don't see any, hardly any stones on any of your nails. I see one here on the pink a little bit, but that putting a few stones on a, on a set here or there is not going to make me think that you're a person of bling. See, there are different types of clients. The people that go to Cardi B's nail techs, to nail tech, they love people who do bling. People who go to Tony's nails, they like no, no polish technique, which is that where they cut out and do the um, colored acrylic. It's different types of clients. It's different types of potential customers. So your title is saying, does that make sense? Lover of bling and color. I only see color. I don't see a lot, a lot of stonework. That's just one little observation. So it's hard for me to tell which lane you fall in as a nail tech who does designs. It has to be clear and it has to be your messaging, your marketing, your this is your advertisement 24 hours a day. And what you do should be clear when a person scrolls, they should instantly know I'm going to say what what type of person you are. And if you're a good fit for them, if they want to look further by the first at least first 10 rows. If I have to scroll past 10 rows, that means that I'm confused as to what your specialty is. I know you do designs or whatever, but I don't know what it is you're really good at. Like, that's your thing. That's my ish. This is what I'm good at. This is what I'm known for. Your title, your caption up here says bling. And you, you even have a crystal for your logo. Bling. Yet your designs don't reflect you being a blingy nail tech to me. And other people can chime in. But when I hear... When I see that your logo and then what you put in your caption of your bio and then I look at your designs, I'm like, hmm, 
I would think every set would have all at least one, two or more bling nails per set because you put it out there that you're a bling person. So to me, there's a little bit of disconnect between the, the, what you say your brand is, what your logo is, and what the pictures reflect. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Uh, okay, so yeah. Now I'm just gonna go to this picture where you said you took your gems off. Now you're gonna cut your babies down. New look coming soon. A way to spin something like that is this is really this particular picture is just telling me how your work looks. Took the gems off. But I'm going to tell you, to be honest with you, seriously, when I first looked at this picture, I thought that this was your fresh set. And I was like, but I guess it's an old set. You got to be very, you all got to be very clear because people don't read. Understand people do not. Oh, wow. Somebody just ordered something. Cool. Um, people don't read. People really don't read. And they just, people are lazy, especially on social media. They're overly stimulated as is. So we have to use our visuals. First, we have to use our name and our logo. We only got a few seconds to capture them. So we got our name and our logo. And that needs to carry through to your pictures quickly. So in looking at this particular picture here, I thought that that was a set you did. And I was about to say, you know, well, you need to get your acrylic a little closer because people are really funny about that. But then you said it took it off. So I'm assuming that this is the old set. Now, we're going to take the same picture and I'm going to tell you how you can spin this. So you could take the same picture and say, it's called social proof. Social proof, you guys. You could take the same picture and you should be using a picture like this. If you just need some content to put up, you need to be using it in a social proof way. What does that mean? Does anybody know? I'm just asking. Let me look at the comments to see if anyone knows. Okay, you said you get that though. Okay, cool. And I'm not, if I'm being too much for you, let me know. But we just, you know, I just really want to make sure that I'm being transparent to you because there's somebody on here. There are a lot of people who come on these lives. They don't say a word. How do I know? Because if I get off this broadcast right now, it shows me 29 people. But if I end this broadcast right now, it will say that over 200 people were here. They just don't say anything or they clicking in and out for a few minutes and in and out, in and out. So I know that somebody will... It may it is helping you, but it may be helping someone else who's like, oh, and they'll come back and comment later. I get those too. And you got lurkers. But yeah. So see, Natasha said, I really appreciate your willingness to let us learn from your page. So let's talk about the social proof. Let's go back to this picture. This particular picture right here. This is a, oh, that's an old set that you are revamping or whatever. Filling it in. You got to let that be known. Hashtag fill in time um, or whatever, three weeks old and they still look fire, you know, whatever. And I'm saying fire, like put the little fire emoji up there. Get at me, my work lasts. OK, so in looking at that initially, because remember, people have ADD. I would just look at this picture quickly and say, oh, that's how I work. Look, oh, it's, it's all far from cuticle. I had to read. Took my jams off. Now I'm going to cut my babies down. New look coming soon. This particular, I'm just using this, this picture. See, Sandy said it daily. Um, Sandoval said it. Should it show how many weeks? Yeah, you're not saying how old this set is or anything. I'm just giving you all examples. I'm going to give examples, not just talking out my butt. There's no examples of how old this is. Is this a set you just did a couple of days ago and you didn't like it, so you're redoing it? Messing on your own nails? I don't know. Social proof is saying, hey, I'm not just talking about it or doing fancy photo shoots. I'm showing you proof online that my stuff works. And also what you do is if you have regulars and you really like the work that you do on them, they keep their nails up. Well, you know, once you really get your acrylic to a certain point, it should not, it should definitely last a month to 
nine weeks. And once it's to that point, ask people to start sending you pictures. Or when they come back, if they're all in place, they'll definitely take a picture. I have so many pictures. I'm always behind on pictures. <laughs> I have thousands of pictures in this phone. <laughs> and um, I always take pictures just showing how much has grown out. You know, I haven't been doing as much as I used to because my clientele is I'm kind of OK with it. But I, I know how to grow a clientele fast. Um, so that's one thing. That's just using that one picture. Right. Hey, hey, hey. This is Crystal, a.k.a. Chrissy. I decided to post some pictures of me and share some of my share some of who I am with y'all. Nice to meet you. Laughing out loud. OK. OK, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. So people say don't when I say don't post post personal pictures up, I'm talking about people who it's confusing because they're posting too much of their personal life and not enough of their work, you know. So um, that's one thing. Okay, here's a picture right here. This is, see, this could be a whole nother set of income right here because you do press ones, right? So I'm reading your press on tag. I'm mad I didn't take a picture of these before I took them off the hand. Come see me about, come see me for one on one nail experience. DM me for appointment times. And if you guys watch my channel enough and really sit down and listen to these lives and not just the first 20 minutes. You know, I'm repeating myself over and over. Now, I'm not saying in the way to you. I'm saying like this is I'm not just making this stuff up. I really stick by what I have to say. This is another stream of income for you. And. You said DM me for appointment times. So let's go back to the beginning, shall we? I'm just going to go all the way back because I, I could just keep, you know, whatever. But just from uh, what I've seen, you're saying you're not getting the client. So let's just do a little this, like a little mini consult just from what I've seen in the past few minutes. It does not quite look like a business page. It looks like you say you love bling. However, your pictures don't reflect that. Also, the pictures need to have your page is like all over the place. So my my eyes are dancing all over the place. And it's hard for me to really focus and get a feel for the type of nail tech you are. The queen of bling, if you go to her page, whatever, you know, she does bling. She's calling herself the queen of bling. As soon as I look at her page, like, bam, 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 bling, 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 bling. And also you'll notice that a lot of branded pages have a theme to them. They all look the same. You can't have some pictures all close up like this and back like it's all, you know, whatever. I'm going to give you one more point or two. You see this picture right here? I don't even really know what that says. Saturday and Sunday appointments open. If you're looking for a one-on-one nail experience, come see about me. DM me for appointment times. You guys, and this is this is in the book, I promise you. This is in the book. It's in the logo section. Never put font this thin on a background. I people are not even gonna stop to try to read that. It's just like it's very hard to read, and most people have ADD. It's gotta be bam in their face. People are not gonna take that much time. You only have their attention for so long, and it needs to be clear what you do and how you do it. And what your specialty is with nails, you got to be very clear because there are different types of nail clients. I, if, if I, if you all you did was natural nails, I should be able to go to your page. And there are nail techs like that. You go right to their page, and you know, all they do are natural nails, and it's lined up perfectly. It's like all the pictures, it's like you could tell that nail tech has a certain towel, a certain position because they all look the same and they're all lined up the same. So if I wore bling long nails and I wanted my nails like Cardi B, as soon as I went to that girl's page and I saw all those natural nails, they look good. There's perfectly lined up. Her page is branded for all that. But I know to click out of her page immediately because she's not the type of nail tech I'm looking for because it was clear to me immediately in three seconds that she don't do what I'm looking for. When I look at your page, I can't really tell exactly what your specialty is, what it is you do, what you know for, like, what do people rock with you for exactly? 
Exactly. I'm not quite sure. It's a difference. It's, it's like things have to be set up a, a precise way and things are set up a way. Like looking at this, I, I was expecting to see a lot of bling and I don't. And then I'm just talking about be careful with those little thin squiggly fonts on top of a background that's not solid. That's that's too much fighting of the eyes. And that's why I'm just now clicking on it, because looking at it like this, I didn't feel like clicking on it because I was like, I don't know what this. I honestly didn't know what it said until I clicked on the box. But it never that's a marketing design. No, no. Never put thin scrolly stuff on top of something that that's like textured. It's too much going on and they're fighting each other. OK, am I being clear about what I'm saying? And then I was looking at your hashtags. So hashtags are. OK, I'm looking at your hashtags and, and that's what I went back to earlier. I said these people can't be really reading this book and, and doing it because well, they're not doing it. But your hashtags are not bad. Your hashtags are not bad. I can't give away all my information, but your hashtags are not bad. That's what I'm going to say. Not bad at all. So you see, I didn't really go right into the hashtags. But I guess like somebody just said here, um, this is the word. Everything should be cohesive. And I'm missing the cohesiveness in your page. And I'm not quite sure what your specialty is. So depending on what I'm trying to get done on my nails, I'm not quite sure if you could pull it off. Also, to be honest with you, don't know you, never been to you, just stumbled across your page. I'm not quite sure if you really do this full time because you have no real way to book. I said that before. You guys got to at least invest in a booking system. And I use Acuity, and I said a million times, A-C-U-I-T-Y, Acuity Scheduling is only $10 a month. That alone will make you look more professional. If I see, so what's happening is people are not quite sure, and this is the, the, the case with most people. People are not quite sure what it is. You They know you do nails, but they're not quite sure what you're really, really good at, what you're known for. They're not sure if you can pull off what they want. And then see what's going to happen is people will start DMing you pictures off of Pinterest. We all know this. They already got a whole slew of people, I mean, pictures that they've been pulling. And they're trying to fast somebody that's matching. Their work is pretty much matching what they're looking for. So if somebody said, if she looked at your stuff and said, okay, she sees a rhinestone. What's in that rhinestone? I can't see. What is this something inside that rhinestone? You all with these squiggly fonts on top of textures. Y'all got to stop doing that. That don't work. Um, I don't know what it says, but. I can't. I, it's some writing in there. I can't see it. Um. That's a problem. You got to change that. But um, that's not really it. The thing of it is, that's just part of sharpening your brand. But when I see this and it says something nails, you probably will come up because your hashtags. If I was in Vegas, you would probably come up because you do have good hashtags. I would tweak some of them, but we're not going to go that deep. But you do have good hashtags, right? And then in your bio, these are good things. In your bio, you have Vegas nail tech. So anybody who puts in Vegas nail tech, you're going to come up in that search, right? So in that, I'm going to click on you. You know why? Because I'm looking for all these bling sets and I'm trying to find somebody who could do me some bling sets for my birthday. You know, I'm, I, we're, we got a table, we got a section. I'm trying to turn up. So they're going to click on you, of course, because you got a diamond in your bio as your logo. You know, so they click on you, but then they're going to get confused, and guess what? They're probably going to click back out and go look at a few other people first, because if they're looking for, let's just say, a bling nail and they read your bio, lover of bling, just a bling nail, but then they scroll, they don't see any real bling. They might see some rhinestones here or there, but they I don't see any sets that's really blinged out. And I'm looking for a bling set. Uh, here's one down here. Let me see. OK. That's some studs. Some bling. They're not quite seeing it. So they're a little bit on the fence about you. And then it's not set up as a business page. And then there's no real booking link or anything right here. So they are confused as to whether or not you are a full time nail tech. That is what's happening. It's not your work. It is how your page is set up. People are not confused. They're not sure if you are a full time nail tech and they're not quite sure what you're really good at. Your work looks good, but it's like, what is her thing? Because I'm looking for something particular. You know, so that is my analysis. If anyone else wants to add in any more, let's do it now. Oh, 
I'm going to go back over these comments. See, we are already over an hour. Okay, so we're gonna. I'm going up. I'm looking at. Um, somebody said they don't get it. I don't know what that is. If you want to uh, explain further. Oh, I got you on the edge of your seat. I, yeah, I hope that explained it. Yeah, see, she said, should it, it should say how many weeks? When you're doing something like that, it's kind of like you use those type of posts as social proof, meaning that I'm showing you proof online. Usually it comes from a, a like a testimonial, okay, that my stuff is good. It's basically like another word of saying an online testimonial, social proof. Somebody said you might want to watermark in pic tagging. So tag your pictures. Somebody said that. Um, yeah. That's a good practice to get into. I don't, I guess I don't, I should. Precious Me said, I wasn't sure what was happening to the nails when I glanced. See, she used the word glanced. People have ADD online because there's so many choices right in front of them at the click of their phone. So you got to be able to make, you got to make sure that your stuff is like, whatever type of work you do, it should be like, as soon as I come on your page, I'm like, oh, like people who know me, they know that I do a lot of medium coffin sets. You look on my page, it's like medium coffin sets, medium coffin sets, medium coffin sets, some bling, you know, whatever. I'm really, my thing now has been more towards very neat, neat, neat work with pops, you know, I'm just, that's my thing. And I do some bling nails because people ask for it, you know, but that's my thing. I really do it all, but I'm saying like that's mostly what my clientele comes in. And when people DM me, guess what? They're usually DMing me pictures of that thing because they looked at my page and they took the extra step to say, oh, this might be a real one right here. This might be what I'm looking for. And then they take that extra step to DM me and show me some pictures off of Pinterest because it looks like a good alignment for them. So, but then Precious said, oh, but I see them when they were fresh and they look great. Side by side would have been great. So basically, if you know how to put the picture side by side. Ain't nobody yelling at you, girl. Please stop playing. <laughs> so Chrissy said she got it. Yep, definitely got to get past week one. Right. Because what we were talking about, I can't, I don't give everything away. But you know, week two and week three, especially, will explain more step by step. And you probably won't need it, but you can get a consultation if you want to. But if you do those steps, let's let's take it from there and see what happens. You know, it, it's going to be a big change. And then I even break down and show you my page and how things are intentionally done. And then I want you to look at people's pages who you admire and you'll see that there is a theme to the pages. And it's very clear that this these are serious, everyday, real. I could I can say real everyday full-time nail techs who take it seriously as a business and see the other thing when you're not clear about if you're if you how you run your page it, it all comes together from week one on the type of person you're going to attract because if you're putting yourself out there like that as a hobbyist you're going to get people who are going to try to treat you like you like a hobbyist and they ain't going to be trying to pay you or anything they're not not for real Look at Lavina, late as usual. See, I didn't even say anything. You said it. Somebody congratulated Robin. Go, Robin. You said it just says my name. It's your name in there. It's your name inside the diamond. I see the word nails. That's all I can see. When I look before, I only see the word nails. If you did do that, it needs to be, it's in there. You got to see. I agree. People go to my page and see that I do a lot of, yeah, you do long nails. See, she's she's a long person. I do a lot of long extra nails. I don't, I will. I'm going to tax you for it because I don't care to do it and I know how to do it, but that's really not my thing. And I don't even want a clientele built around that. If Lavina was in the same shop with me, the same city as me, I would probably say, go talk to her. <laughs> not in a mean way. I'm just saying like, you know, I got somebody that's perfect for you. And she, she loves doing it. And I would send that business her way. I probably would, especially if I was booked and I couldn't take them when they wanted to get in. It's kind of weird when people who are plain Jane find me, but it works out because I'm trying to be open to short nails too. Right. We talked about that. 
And we even talked about, if I'm not mistaken for you, Levina, actually, because of the type of nails you said you wanted to do, it's a, it was so night and day and who you wanted to target. I also said, we talked about it. Yeah, I remember you might need to get even get a second page or something because those two, the two types of nails you want to do, and it's, it's in the book, <laughs> you were looking at number one and number, it's like different types of clients and I have them numbered and I explain them. But those two types of clients, like number one would be kind of turned off by what they would see on what it takes to attract those long nails. They would think maybe that, oh, that's ratchet, that's ghetto. You know, even though I'm not judging, but I'm just telling you how people think. And they just might click out because of that. So I was saying, if you're serious about trying to pursue a different, whole different type of clientele and understanding it, um, you might even want to look into having a separate page. And we talked about it. You can go back and look at that video. I'm sure you you got it. You know, so that's true. What she said. Right. And hers is a little bit more than short nails. She wants to go for high end, high end type, a certain what some people may say, bougie nails. The women with, you know, just a, just a different type of client. It all matters when people are looking at your page. It's, it's your handshake. And some people are like, oh, no, I would never. You know, so you got to make sure somebody want to come up to you and shake your hand. The handshake is them getting your DM. Or the hand first, the handshake might the wave might be them getting your DM. The handshake is them clicking on your link and booking you. Then the rest is up to you. Precious Me said, I feel confused about my IG now because not everyone loves glitter, but I'm obsessed with glitter. But will having that in my IG handle be an issue? No, not necessarily. I mean, look at my nails. My name is Chicago Nails and Makeup because I'm a makeup artist too. And I just decided to go with my name versus, you know, pictures and all that stuff. But that's because I had to find a way to encompass everything I do and be clear about everything I do, not be long winded with my logo and also something that was unique and stands out. So I thought Chicago Nails and Makeup was that, you know? So don't feel confused if your name, if let's just say your name is Precious Glitter Nails or whatever. Now, it should be some glitter in there somewhere. It would be kind of weird to me if you said your name was Precious Glitter Nails and then you had all, all um, no chip manicures with no glitter anywhere. Like that would be kind of, that would be kind of mismatched, not cohesive as someone said. But as long as all the pictures claim as long as your overall social media presence paints a clear picture of the type of work you do generally, what you're really, really good at, what you're known for is not that big of a deal. You get what I'm saying? But if your name is precious glitter nails and then you got all types of nails, long nails, short nails, acrylic nails, toenails, broken nails, this nails, this, it's like, and then you got personal pictures in there. It's all over the place. There's no real theme to your page. It's just all over the place. There's no real way to book you for real. And then you're not posting that much. It's just so much to it. There's no one thing's like that's absolutely wrong. But I'm just saying these are little things that cohesively come together as a brand. And we're speaking to things that throw the brand off and people don't even look at you as a brand versus things that make you look like a brand. So nobody's saying, well, her name is Precious Glitter. But I don't see glitter, so I would never book. If you pick the name already and it's already out there, you work with it. Just make sure that your overall presence and setup on your page is clear on what you do. I don't know if that makes sense. Well, no, it does make sense. It's just, you'll know. Go look at some people's pages. Go look at Tony's nails. Go look at nail nails. Go look at all these people. They have like a certain look and feel to their page. Even if they're doing something new, like they switch over and start doing I don't know, sideways crooked cut nails because that's trendy. What they'll do is they'll have like rows of that and they'll break it off and still put in their signature stuff too. You get what I'm saying? Like it's all organized. It has to be organized. That's all. Hi, Jason. I was bringing me my apples. That's right, Jason. You should be bringing me three apples because you haven't been here and I've been quite hungry lately because I haven't had my apples. Thank you so much, Jason. <laughs> I got to go, but I will catch the rest tomorrow morning. Just made an account on Style C yesterday. You're the second person that mentioned Acuity. Is it true that you can generate client questionnaires? Yep. Mm -hmm. 
everybody go to style seed, but I, I pay ten dollars. Acuity is like, I mean, style seed is thirty. I pay ten. I've had them. I haven't had any problems with them. I pay ten dollars, ten dollars, and it does everything. Captures credit card, everything, and they do not give me. They need to be giving me a a link, a code. I told them that too because I keep mentioning it. I go with Acuity. It's cheaper. It does everything. It that does and everything. It has. It's very powerful. You got to just play around with it. Okay, Natasha. See you later. I want to do people who like medium long nails and color with a touch of bling. I'll change that in my bio, though. You don't have to do that. I was just. You don't have to be that specific. All I'm saying is that your logo and what your tagline was led me one place, but that's not really what I'm seeing. You don't have to be that specific. Maybe just, you know, just say professional Vegas nail tech or full time nail tech or, you know, professional da -da -da -da, or season nail tech or whatever. You know, just something kind of bragging on yourself. You don't have to be so specific about it so you don't feel like you're pigeonholed. Whatever you do, though, you know, just make sure that it's clear. But in that tagline, don't get so specific in that. You don't have to say, I do medium nails. I don't say that. <laughs> what does mine say? I, that was my problem. I had to keep switching this up because I do so much, right? So I just say nail and makeup artist with the little emoji. Mine just has like the little emoji of some nail polish and of a lipstick. But see, this is my, this is my business page here. So then it has a link where I can put my booking in. So that's all it says. Chicago Nail Tech slash MUA. Then underneath it says makeup artist. Then it says nail tech and makeup artist. It's just under those different categories. It's either nail tech or makeup artist. But looking at my page, you'll see pretty much what I do. It's, if you look at my page, it's a lot of medium coffin sets or square sets. You don't see super long nails on my page. And I rarely get people coming to me with super long nails. Because they can look at my page and they're going to go to the next person because they can, they don't really see it on my page. And it's not lined up right now, but this stuff is on a grid. And so I purposely post pictures a certain way on a grid. So it lines up. So when I do those big pictures, all that's in the book. Yeah. But yeah, so you could you could see. Hey, Joshua. Thank you. That makes sense. Yes. My current messy page just has a few glittered nails. OK. And even if you're going to do some glitter nails, let me tell you how you can do things, too. Just make sure it's organized. That's what I'm going to say. Make sure it's organized. Been here since you came on. Almost done with the petty. Good stuff. Yay. Hey, Marie Allen. So that is pretty much what I think I wanted to say today. I was talking about the whole transparency thing, the industry thing, and how my intentions, what they are here. And I had to laugh because I, I'm not doing the fanciest thing here on YouTube. I might not be the most popular, but just always know that my intentions are real, you know, and I really want to see you guys doing the stuff that we talk about. And if not, let's find out what's wrong, what's missing. And like we did that six hour chat, um, we helped two people figure out some things that they were talking themselves out of and moving forward. So that's what I'm really here for. Like, that's what I'm really here for. So um, I'm not going to keep everybody super long today. Are there any other questions? No? Okay. I think that's it for today because I didn't plan on even coming on, but I'm glad I did. So I will catch you guys in the next live or the next video. Wait a minute. Somebody just said something. I'm probably talking too fast. I know I talk fast. Multi-talented Leo said, hi, I'm starting fresh. What do you all think about the name queen type beauty? I want to do nails and makeup. I don't know. Why are those little asterisks there? Queen type beauty. I don't, is that the name for real? Or are you saying like insert a word here? You know? I really, really appreciate you. You genuinely want to help us. I do. And thank you so much, Serena. I don't know. That name, it's not a bad name. 
Let me tell you a bad name in the beauty industry. Hamburger helper. Like, it's like, what? As long as I can look at your name and know what you do, then that's fine. As long as I can look at your name and know that you're in the beauty industry, that is fine. So what the names should be specifically is up to you. All I say is that understand when you are building your brand that people have ADD and a short attention span. And it needs to be clear because nobody is going to sit and figure, you, figure out what you do and all of that. They're going to just click on the next person. That's all. Joshua said, as a guy, you all inspire me to want to get into this. Yes, because it's a great career and it's more than just designs, designs, designs. <laughs> and another nail tech had posted and there. I see that other people are starting to, I notice, I pay attention. I notice since I've been on here, other nail techs are starting to lean towards the direction I'm leaning in too, which is a good thing. Um, we got to start focusing on the business aspect of things and then, um, you know, start really talking about the career part of it because, yeah, it's it's a career. It really is. Oh, without it, I think it's fine. So, I, yeah, I said the answer on that. As long as it's clear what you do, it's fine. What I do tell people, too, is don't put up a name that's hard to pronounce. Like some people will be like Shanika, Shanika Lada, Shanika Lada nails and makeup. People are going to be like, what? It should be something that people can pronounce. I see some some choices and names. I'm like, I don't even know what that's saying. You know? You would love to see more black nail salons. They're out here, but a lot of them are not doing business properly. And they're getting complaints. And that's how I get a lot of them in my chair, a lot of clients, because they try to go patronize. And they're like, they didn't, they weren't there. They want to fight. They had me waiting for three and four hours. I came to see this person. This person ain't show up. So they put me in another person's chair and they mess me up. And, you know, I hear so many stories. So we, we, they're out there, but we got to learn how to do business. Business. Everybody want to get to the money. They don't want to do the hard part with a real business or be consistent. That's annoying to me. You've been wanting to get into doing pedicures. I have a, a, a book on that. I mean, a, a video on that. And you watch the Grumpy Nail Tech. What'd you think of her? Don't you like her channel, the Grumpy Nail Tech? Is she could be our news reporter, right? And she will disappear. And I think she came back. Looked like she was working on some things. I'm like, no, girl, stay here. We need she has she has her own little space that she could be in on this in this YouTube world. And she's a great nail tech, and she doesn't do long nails. She will, but I'm saying her thing is short nails and and little cute, very cute. Designs on shorter nails, very classy, but a little bit of pop. She's good. She's good. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate you. You show we have the power to have real control over our success and our income. And we do if we do the work. And, you know, I'm still doing the work. I'm still doing the work. You guys are watching my journey and what I'm trying to do. And I can't wait for this one particular video. Y'all gonna really see me cry. I'm going to have somebody film me on that day. I'm going to have somebody film me on that day. Man, I see it too. Our salons be unprofessional. It, it, exactly. Even if they pretty, they still super unprofessional. Even the owners are unprofessional. Chicken, eating chicken at the desk. And no, 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 no. Will I don't? I know that question is coming. No, I will never open up a salon ever again. <laughs> I can't deal with other people like that. Mm -mm. You love it, right? I love it too. I still go, I'll go back and watch her um, channel sometimes if I don't have anything to do. Um, you watched her too? Precious me? Yeah, definitely. Y'all should have told her I sent you. Yes, your creativity will be your moneymaker. Your creativity along with your professionalism and your, the biggest word, it starts with a C. The consistency is what brings in the money. And like I said earlier, I'd rather consistently, slowly, than do like this. Because anything that goes up that fast comes down. And then you got to find something else to make that fast money. I don't, I already learned many, many times over many, all of my life that fast money never lasts. So, yeah, all of that. And then... Uh-uh, because people always ask me that. People I went to high school, you can open no, 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 because nail most nail techs are flaky. 
especially a lot of the young ones. They don't want to have work. They want to make enough money just to, to, to kick it that weekend, buy the outfit and everything for the concert, a fly, be flewed out somewhere. Half want to work. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. A lot of little pettiness between the girl. I cannot. I, I'm, I'm too old. I cannot. And I'm very like, when it comes to business, seriously, for real, I don't play. And then I don't ever want another storefront again. The most I might do are some sweets. And you're your own boss. And it, even that's going to be ran kind of strict. You're your own boss, but you're going to sign some contracts. And it's going to be automatic automatic deduction on your rent every Saturday. Like I have it all written out when I, if I ever did anything. That's it. I don't ever want a salon. And people think it's so much money in salons and it's no art. I got a, that's in one of the other lines. It, it's different. Everybody else want to be a boss. So it's a lot of overhead too. But I never want to seem like a hater. I'm just saying it from owning, being an owner more than one occasion. So it's not as pretty. I don't, people think because they get a salon, the salon owners a lot of times are stressed the hell out and broke because your money depends on how many employees you got and if they're coming to work and just how you got to set up. But it's just not the same. Like back in the 90s, early 2000, up to about 2005, salon owners were making a killing. But nowadays, please. Matter of fact, one of my newer clients, she owns a really nice salon. She just told, I got to call, make some calls for her. She's trying to get rid of her salon. She's been had it for like 30 years. She's like, you know, anybody want it? Because I'm just, I'm just done. <laughs> like, I'll, I'll make some calls because I do know some people. Mm hmm. Salon business is kind of antiquated. Sorry, it is the new way of the future. Everybody's getting their own suite. Everybody wants to be a boss. So don't nobody wants to get a booth. And if they get a booth, they're going to you got a lot of salon hoppers. So suites, people are like, if you make it, if you make suites sweet for people and attainable for people, that's where you're that's where you're going to get more uh, stable people. Consistency is my focus for 2020. Confirmation, yes. Yes, that's that's what's hot now. If you go to Atlanta, there's sweets everywhere. And I think in, in Texas too, sweets everywhere. That's the that's the hot thing. And they're popping up here in Chicago. There were hardly any in the side of town I needed to be on. But they're coming up. They're coming up. And um, that's bigger money, better money, and less stress. Just keep the building up and make it safe and clean and let them do their own thing. What they do in this suite is their I their focus, and I personally would put their butt on a um on a um a payment not a payment plan but um the money automatic automatic deduction set up. That's easy to do, but I'm not giving out all my information right now. <laughs> but yeah, yep, yep. See they that see that's the way people are not opening up. So when the last time you seen a salon open up? Suites are opening up. Pay attention. You see what I'm saying is true. There too is just open up in my area. I will be the boss of my nail room in my house. Yep. Mm -hmm. And this that's the cheapest way to go. People, you can't, you can do that. You sure can. You can. A lot of states, they just want you to have like separate entrance and all that. It depends that it's not. But if you are doing your own personal clientele and you're not soliciting people off the street and all that, it's okay to service your own people in your house. You can't just be like soliciting, you know, like like here in Chicago is certain. Areas I'll drive up a block and it'll be a daycare. That daycare has a sign out front, you know, a sign in the window, an actual stake sign in the grass. They went and got the zoning and the licensing to do it that way because they're soliciting in a business capacity in a residential area. That's a little different from saying I just do what I do in the privacy of my own home with my personal, my personal space, my personal people. I don't solicit. Nobody even knows what I do. Who the hell knows what you're doing in your house? You know, if that's the case, then um, people who so close and everything, they can't so close in their house. They need to go so close and place else. No, they 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 so close in their house for people they know. Yeah. So it, it depends. It's like a fine line on how you do that. But most of you all, you'll be fine. Wait. Right. Because I thought about that. I said you never answered that. Ask that question. You and I had a talk before, but I have to ask while you're on live. But what's your take on a black man getting into the nail business? Right. We never talked about that. Right. Do you all have any suggestions? Just wonder. I already told you it's an excellent idea and just like a lot of hairstylists 
I've said this in a couple of lives. The hair, I knew a male hairstylist. His hairstyles were not anything to write home about. But he stayed booked. Even when everybody else was slow, he always had women on top of women on top of women stacked up in there. And they would sit there and they'd just be kicking and everything. He said, oh, you're so funny. <laughs> he used that to his advantage. He stayed booked. And he wasn't cheap. And they would pay and tip. And he had fur coats and all types of stuff and different cars and all this type of stuff. He was popular. So you could use that to your advantage because this is a female dominated industry other than Asian because an Asian is male dominated. But outside of Asian, it's female dominated. So you could use that to your advantage. Now, I'm not saying don't be now. You don't have to be flirting with these women, but you just. Have you been on Instagram and have you looked up hashtags black well, male nail, you know, they don't have to be black, but black nail techs, black male nail tech, and then male nail tech. And see what they're doing. You'll make money. It's fine. Even if you're not even all that great, you will make money because women like to be pampered, but they love to be pampered by a man. And they really just want to come and see what it is you do. They just want the presence of a man. It's just really like that. And it's funny because in all the salons I worked at, a lot of the men are gay. And they are openly gay, yet they still keep a hold. And that's it, hell. A gay man, a gay male doing nails. You know, women flock to gay men, period, for beauty and all that fashion and all that advice. Because they, 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 just, it, they just do. They trust their opinion in that. So even if you're straight or you're gay, it still works to your advantage. They're going to come flock in your chair regardless. 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 See, Joshua, you should, Joshua. Definitely. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Robin, can we talk about working out of your home next time? Rules we should have in place, precautions we should have to say direct, direct me to one of your videos. Uh, I don't have a video on that. I'm not going to make a specific video on that because it depends on where you live. It varies. It varies, but you guys are overthinking that. People do stuff out of their house all the time. But if you're licensed, you're not going to. Hmm, now, what I will say is that people, people who are licensed don't really have to worry. Even if you have a, you know, a person that's like hating on you or whatever, state board is not going to come out unless you have done something ridiculously crazy. Or if, like I put that thing up about somebody being fined or something like that. That person, I don't they weren't licensed and they were doing it. So they were running illegal business out their house. You know what I'm saying? Like they were illegal and they weren't even licensed to do what they were doing. It's almost as bad as them in there, you know, doing injections like those Botox parties and stuff. And those people are not licensed. They just found out how to do it and they started doing it on people. Yeah, those people could be arrested. You know, I'm not saying nails, but I know the Botox parties and all that. Those, that's super illegal. But people do stuff out of their house all the time. But I cannot advise you on what you should do in your particular city or state. What I will tell you is that I really... It depends on where you are in your career. If you just start now, it depends on where you are in your career. You might want to go work in a salon and get some more experience or get some more exposure. If you have people that you've been doing forever anyway, and you know it's these handful of people that come to you all the time, what's the problem with them coming to your house if you have your house set up to do it that way? These, this is your private set of people that you do a service for. It's no different than a tax person who's doing taxes out of their house. Nobody says, oh, you can't do taxes from home. You must do taxes from H&R Block. Nobody says that to the seamstress, you know, or the person who's selling dinners out their home, whatever, or catering out their home. Nobody says that to them. Why are you guys so paranoid about that? <laughs> it's different. But I cannot advise and say this is the video on exactly because it varies. But I think you all are overthinking it. And if, you, if your business is that big, then maybe you should go get a suite if it bothers you that much. You know, if, if your business is outstanding where you got so many people, you know, like a ridiculous amount of people and it just will look strange. And then maybe you should get a suite. But if you come on now, if you got a handful of people, a nice little group of people that, you know, and you feel OK with them coming to your house, just do it out of your house. That's just my opinion. I can't give you professional advice. You know, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Now, you unlicensed people doing that? Mm. Now, now, I definitely can't advise you because you're already kind of working illegally. So, ew, that's a double illegal. You know, that's my real answer. Here's one. 
follow Keys Nails on IG. Mess around and be extra good looking. Women be throwing money at you. Yes, they will. Yep. Somebody said they are interested in that as well. You got to do your own due diligence and then you have to make your own informed decision. People are working out of their house all the time. I personally don't even have time to work in the salon because I don't, I do nails and I have my clients that I've been doing forever. We are actually, I'm actually friends with most of my clients, first of all. So who's going to say anything? Most of my clients are my real life friends. Like I've been to all their houses. I go to their birthday parties. We're not close friends, but a lot of us are straight up friends. Like I met their special events in life birthdays and all that we hang out when they fit when they're finished with their nails we we still still talking about stuff and laughing about stuff or we've been watching the kevin hart thing on my phone we might sit finish watching it hell a lot of my clients know each other and they end up talking and hanging out so i mean like it's hard for me to say what you should do i don't i i pretty much have been doing the same people like forever or the people that i do are referrals from people that i already know so it's like i might do you but then she she started sending her best friend you know and then that little clique of chicks that all know each other they all come so and then we all become cool because we start talking about men and dating and all this so it's when i'm working i kind of feel like i'm just talking to my friends in and out my house all day long that's why i said you know this time of year makes me nervous because it's a lot of random people and i'm pretty much um I pretty much had the same floor of people <laughs> all the time. I can't push people to do it at their house. That's a personal decision. And if you are not licensed, you are really taking a big chance, period, working and charging people with no license. But doing it on your, in your house with no license, yeah, you really putting yourself on a big, a big radar. But people do it all the time. But I don't suggest, just think about all that. That's what I'm going to say. I, I, it's hard for me to give a hard answer. It's up to you. Why does color or gender matter? Your work speaks for itself. If you are good, no one can take that away from you. Go for it. It's all about taking risks. So you, I get what you're saying. Color does not matter. I think that people, I'm, I'm personally saying black, whatever, because with us, <sighs> yeah, people say it's true, but you got to be in the shoes. To, for us, we still get treated a little different on certain things. Working in, you could walk in the salon, I could walk in the salon, and your work could be just a tad bit, but behind mine, they're gonna go with you before they go with me. They are, but you gotta be, you gotta be a black person to understand it. I promise you, that stuff still happens. So forgive people. I'm not gonna say forgive. Understand when we say that it's because sometimes we have to give each other little nudges and pushes and stuff because. The opportunities that are available to some are not necessarily 100% in every case scenario available and fair for us. And that is just real. I hate that it's still like that, but that's why we're saying it. So color doesn't really matter, but in this case, gender does. I'm not going to say matter. Gender presents special opportunity. That's what I'm saying. It's special opportunity and that even if you're not good, you still have a better chance of succeeding faster if you are a male because just because from being you're, you're a man. Straight up. That's true. I know a lot of men who are not even that good and they never have to worry about getting new clients. I used to go to a guy, I can't even remember his name, back in the day, and he did hair out of his house in a bad, rough area. And we would be in that cramped in that little bitty apartment with our food and everything and just we would wait all day. If he tells me to come at three o'clock in the afternoon, I know I'm not leaving out till two in the morning, but I didn't care. I was prepared for it. I just come and get my food before I come. And I would just like to watch him do hair and all of that. It's just something about a woman going to a man and watching a man do hair. I, I didn't care. He, but he was actually good. He was really good. Natasha Rush is talking about ventilation. Are you really doing that many nails? See, that's what I'm saying. We be overthinking stuff. Are you really just doing nails that hardcore where you're talking about ventilation and all that? I mean, open your window. <laughs> open your window. Are you you got that many clients? Like honestly, you got that many clients. Then maybe you should get into a suite. Or you could also create your own ventilation. Like, um, 
there, if you really, really worried about that, you can have somebody easily just come cut a, um, a little hole and take that, take it out. That's that's ventilation right there. Or you could put a fan in your window that and turn the fan to take the air out of the room. That's that's ventilized, that's ventilating the room. Um, I personally, my people say they don't even smell acrylic, but I always keep my windows cracked and I don't have that problem. I don't know. And then there's a way to keep it under control. It, we 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 talked about this in many videos. Like it's ways to control your smell. If your smell is that loud, you should be looking at that smell. It might be MMA. It's not that loud. Um, do it. Hate to say it, but women are attention whores in the salon. Yeah. So if you got a man rubbing you and, and doing your show, and I'm telling you, like Joshua, you already know. You already know what to do. Like, do one or two. And then women love to brag and say, oh, a guy does. That's the first thing they're going to say. A guy does my nails. His name, Jason, the uh, man did this girl. Yes, he is good, right? Even if you made mistakes, they're gonna, they just gonna love to brag on top of being that attention whore. Yep. Jason said, I, I appreciate the encouragement and, and everything, peeps. So, yeah, the ventilation to keep the chemicals out your house. Now, I'm gonna say this too, because this keeps popping up. I had another video, it kind of bothered my soul a little bit, and I had to come back and say something. <laughs> I, this is something like stuff like this keeps coming up. And some of you guys are overthinking this way too deep. You don't have a whole salon of people. You all are thinking about discount salons and it's 12 of them and they're doing acrylic all day. Yeah. And using MMA. Yeah, stink is loud. It's just you doing a couple people here and there. How loud is it really? Some of you all, I think, want to also, I'm not just saying you, but it just prompted me to think about it because I see these type of things pop up in my thread and the comments and I'll go back and look at them like, uh-uh, let me say something. Because <sighs> nothing is perfect. That's what I'm going to say. I think that some people will look and be like, well, is this, is that, or this, that, you know, the smell. And I can't take the smell. What do I do? My husband doesn't like to see. I've seen that many. My husband doesn't like that. No, no, no. It's always going to be something there. I'm not going to give you the answer to make everything perfect. Everything has something. Yo, that woman who talking about the smell and her husband. Okay, your husband come in with dirty ass work boots every day and tracking mud everywhere. You know, your husband coming in and, and, and putting up his dirty, whatever, his stinky, whatever, from whatever it is he do. It's always something in every job that's like an inconvenience in some way, fashion, or form. I don't really know many especially crafts like this, where it's like, it never, it's going to always be these little things that kind of get on your nerves, the little ticky things. It's, it's not going to be perfect. It's not. All you can do is just kind of educate yourself, do some research and see how you can make it workable for you. But it's not perfect because I'm going to tell you even here, now this is something, I have carpet on this floor and I know once I move, I'm definitely pulling up the carpet if there's carpet in wherever I decide to work because carpet holds odor. And with me doing pedicures, that's a problem. And it's so funny because I got one of my clients slash friends. She's like, T, when do you, when do you want me to bring this shampoo over here? She's going to shampoo my rug for me. Um, <laughs> it's always something. Trust and believe. But I don't let it stop me. If we look for reasons to be stopped, we, we will never get to where we got to go. I'm a solution type person. So I'm like, yeah, do it. Move forward. We figure it out when it comes. You know, this is just my, this is just my, you know, whatever. And and I don't worry about the house thing because nobody has ever messed with me in all these years. And if somebody did, I, I ain't doing nothing wrong. I don't know what anybody else doing wrong, but so I do my friends and family nails. I'm licensed in what I do. I do it from home. My landlord is very well aware. They approved me to do it. That's how I got the place. I showed them my bank statements. I'm not so it's all about how you do it, and that's why I can't advise and say this is the answer because it depends on your unique situation. And there's a braider over there and a, a hairstyle of somebody over there. It's a couple of people in, in these, it's like six buildings over here. It's it's all type of people working from home here. I don't know why people are so paranoid about that. If you are not licensed, yeah, you should be paranoid. But if you are, you're fine. And if you get a ton of people where well, you think it's gonna be like this stupid big distraction, then you need a suite, and that's just that. Not trying to be offensive, but when I see stuff like that, I get those type of comments flowing through. And I'm like, oh, here we go. We got somebody's kind of paranoid about it. Y'all, 
Don't let that stop you. Like, don't. We, we'll talk ourselves right out of stuff. Don't. Please don't. Um, so don't worry about the ventilation. Those are ways to keep the ventilation out. Keep your container closed. You can also keep like a special thick contractor type bag and you keep that tissue or whatever in there. I spray down alcohol. Every time I'm finished doing someone's acrylic, I spray that area down with alcohol, neutralizes the scent. And I always keep the window cracked. And I ask people all the time, they're like, I don't smell acrylic at all. I have to ask because I'm around it. But I don't really smell it. And they say they don't either. And, and this is the other thing. Like, I really use my home a lot. So I burn candles all the time. I'm always cooking something, warming up something. So I don't I don't smell it. I don't know. And they say they don't either. And I'm, I'm a full-time nail tech. Like, I really be doing people. So I don't know. I, have you really experienced that problem? Or is that just something that you put in your head to, to say, oh, I don't know if I should do it. But if it bothers you that much, go work someplace else and don't do it from home. We had a lady down here in South Florida. She was codenamed Dr. Fix-A-Flat mm -hmm. because she was injecting Fix-A-Flat into people's butts until she got caught. She had a private suite. That's what I'm saying. It's people doing illegal stuff in suites. You know, if you if you think that's illegal, it's not illegal to work from home or whatever. The problem is when you start doing stuff you're not licensed to do, that is when people get in trouble. People are not getting in trouble for where they're doing it. It's what they're doing with no license. I understand. And when I put on that community board, that person was not licensed. And that's why they got caught and fined and all that stuff. And like somebody said in the other live, that in some states, that's why I said it depends. They will, some states will stop you from doing it altogether. Like you are revoked from even ever applying, depending on what they found or what happened to make them come out and catch you. It just depends. So it's not the worker from where you're working, it's what you're doing. See? And they had a person in Georgia was doing the same thing. She went to jail and everything. Um, I can't remember. I want to say her name was something like that. But yeah. And see, private suite. So hmm, that didn't make her legit because she went and got a suite. <laughs> see, this is for you, Joshua. Uh, look up the mail tech on YouTube. What are some of the things we can do to eliminate that ratchet monomer smell? Okay, I already answered that. We, I know we're on business mostly, but we, can we get a video on shaping and filing? That's why I bought this thing right here. I'm always buying stuff, you guys. So that is what I plan to do. But like I said, most of the time when I'm working, I'm too busy to stop. And it depends on if the client, I keep a very tight schedule. And sometimes I don't have time to stop and be setting up equipment. It just depends. So I plan to do it. And that's why I bought this thing. But I'm not going to give a date on that because it depends on when I have time to actually stop and do it. Because I noticed that doing that slows me up. And I can't do that when I'm busy. And a lot of days I'm busy. So if I get the right client with the right timing and they're the last person of the day where I got a big gap, then I will say, hey, man, if I feel like I've done before. But the problem was I had it on my ring light because I have an attachment on my ring light where I can put my phone to and I let people watch movies on there. So I did just find something so it can be like this so I can really show you. So that is the plan. Natasha Roberts said, thank you for your input. No, thank you for, for your support. Joshua said, thank you for all this input. No, thank you. I remember I never answered um, the question. Robin said, I'm thinking about the random people too. See, mm -hmm. see, see, I already know what it is. And I'm the person like, I'm like, to me, she'd be nice, Matt, because your voice can sound a little aggressive. I know it's, it's, it's like, I'm like, you're like the mom. I can't help it. I don't even have kids. Because <laughs> I already know what it is. People be saying one thing, but I'm like, do you really have that many people where it's like, Oh, the acrylic smell is just permeating the paint. It's 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 fuming under the, the under in the rug. It's just so much acrylic being done in this apartment that you can't even breathe. The kids is passing out. Come on now. Is that really the problem? Or we finding reasons not to do it? You really thinking about the random people. If you have all these fears and stuff, don't work from home because uh, it's not for everybody. And I have, I can't remember which live it is, so many lies. And one of the lies, we went into more detail about that on ways to trick people. And I even posted about having cameras. They even have fake cameras. They sell them at five below if you're paranoid about that. But I don't know. There are ways to go around that. But if it bothers you that much, it's probably not for you. Every, every scenario or every setup is not for every person. That's why I said even period. 
When people are looking for a nail tech, they're looking for a good fit for them because there are people who won't go into people's homes either. They don't go to people who work out their homes, out their house. They will only go to someone in a salon. They could have been traumatized by something. I don't know. So maybe that's not the route for you, you know? What's your opinion on leaving the salon? Do you give two or one, two or one weeks notice like a regular job or just leave this commission? No, give a notice, especially if it's on commission. That's the proper thing to do in life. It's funny like that. You never know when you need to come back to that person. You never know if one of those people in that salon may be opening a salon and you go to apply to work at their salon. And they remember how you did at the place you two work together. You never know. Very small industry. So you always want to give notice. I don't care if it's booth rent or commission. Be professional because everybody knows everybody. You never know who you make circle back around to as much as you can. I've made mistakes, but that's my advice now. At least two weeks at least two because especially with commission they usually commission salons they are setting your books up for you i used to have a, a big commission salon and if somebody i have on the schedule and i've already put people in your books it could be up to two weeks out and if you tell me at the last minute or just don't show up you just put everybody in the bind so now we got to juggle around these clients and also um sure we got to move all these these um these appointments around so that's that's like an inconvenience to everyone. It's actually kind of like it would kind of be low key a selfish move, not thinking about the people you work with, which you don't have to. But you just don't want to put yourself out there in the industry to be that nail tech because people talk. Have you ever had your nails done by a male nail tech? If so, what type of communication should be applied to ensure professionalism? Why are you a flirt by nature or something? Just talk. Don't ask them are they single. Don't ever do that. Always keep it professional. Don't, 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 don't date your clients. Don't do that. It's a situation right now where someone called me about somebody who owns a business and they're being so inappropriate and they're Hooking up with two and three people inside two or two or three of the customers all at the same time is getting it's getting very messy and they're not even a year in. It will get messy. Don't do it. Um always just here are two things you could always fall back on in conversation. Consultation, continue consultation, meaning consultation in the beginning, and then telling them what you're doing and why you're doing it. That's always conversation. And sometimes silence is okay. Don't talk the head off if you don't, you know, just feel the person out. And then here's another one. Being a comedian to a certain degree, just make sure that your jokes are not, you know, sexist or anything like that. But just like little, just being funny or current events, not politics or religion, but just like talk. Do you watch Power? Oh, did you see what happened? Da, 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 da? You know, stuff like that. What shows you watch? Oh, I'm watching that, too. The conversation will flow naturally. But be careful being a man in the beauty industry because a lot of these women are like they said <laughs> thirsty for attention and anything some of them are probably going to have a crush on you or maybe have a little bit of a crush on you so what that's just women in general there are a lot of lonely women out there and you don't ever want to give them anything to let them know that you're trying to come on to them if you, if you do have a crush on someone, don't talk to them right away. <laughs> Wait at least a long time and just get to know them. And it's actually to your advantage because you can be getting to know them just through general conversation. Don't talk to your clients. Don't, don't hook up. So to keep it professional, consultation, talk about what t TV shows are always safe because you let them lead that conversation and, and you keep talking. And if they're not watching anything that you watch, then you further the conversation by saying, I never seen that. What's that about? Oh my God, you haven't seen it? It's so good. So this guy, you know, so everybody now is talking about the show You on Netflix. I need to go watch You yet. You after I finish this. I will, I've had like, when games, Game of Thrones was ending, I was taking a lot of conversations, especially on my, out, you know, going to people's homes that I didn't know at all. Everybody was watching Game of Thrones, right? Final seasons, final episodes. I would use that I would use that conversation and I never seen an episode and I would let them tell me. And then I would just ask more questions. Well, how is that? But I don't get it. You would have to watch it. See, because it's this, 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 this. I'm like, oh, wow. But I'm still working. That's how you do it to me. 
newborn baby in the house. And yes, I have that many clients. Oh, wait, newborn baby in the house. And yes, I will have that many clients speaking it into existence. I use creative nail design. Okay, you will. You will. You will. Newborn baby in the house. Have you worked in a salon at least a year or two before you just going right into your house? I don't suggest new nail techs just stay in their house. I think you all need to get out and get some world experience. Travel the world a little bit and see what's out there. Learn from other nail techs. If you don't have anything to really go on, you it's good to get out there with other nail techs because they'll teach you things. To death. What the heck was that? They will teach you things that school definitely will not teach you. Tips and tricks and little, you know, just ways to kind of cut corners, you know, without hurting the client or whatever. It's good to be around other nail techs to pick up on what it took in a salon, it's always going to be people who are like seasoned and you just watch them. Don't stare at them, but watch them and see how they speak. How did they build their clientele? How do they keep their clients engaged? Are they overly, are they funny? Are they, what is it that makes people come to them? So I don't suggest that new nail techs just go in their house because you're cutting yourself off from being around more seasoned people. If you're worried about boofering, going to a commission place. But still get get around some real seasoned professionals because this business is like not it's easy, but it's not easy. You got to have every piece of information you need. Natasha, keep, she keep laughing at me. Y'all look, this ain't my client, so I can say something. Y'all look at his cheeks. He don't. Anthony, let me tell y'all something. See, Anthony, I'm going to put you on the spot here. Y'all, Anthony done put up another picture. That is not the picture that Anthony had up the other day. Look at that thumbnail picture. That is not the picture that Anthony had up the other day. He done went and put up a sexier picture. That is not the picture. And see, this picture, I think, is clearer and, and everything. Because remember, I was talking about his cheeks. So now he done, he done took a picture and put more light on his cheeks, you all. You see that? And then he put his arm up like this and, and angled it. He was like, okay, take my picture. I'm going to put this on my YouTube don't be doing that with these clients now they're gonna get you they're gonna think you're trying to some girl will be like he did that for me <laughs> i'm messing with you <laughs> i followed Ch chon legend before he did the Kardashians meal, however i don't know i don't even know i can't follow everybody i'm sometimes i'm i follow i see stuff but i just I'm, I'm busy. I either be busy or tired or coming up with my next master plan. Having your own salon at home doesn't the state needs to come in and do an inspection. You are overthinking that. Are you opening up a whole salon? Are you building in plumbing and stuff like that? Are you changing the architecture of, let's say, your basement? Are you knocking out walls and stuff? Yeah, then they do. And you need to hire an architect. Do you have enough clientele to build a salon in your home? Oh, I'm sore you off from working out. That's why I'm making these spaces. I'm just saying, you all are overthinking that. Like, one of my clients is a home, she has a home. She has a school at her house, an official school. And she had to go through a lot of paperwork and stuff with the city. But she is like the real deal. Like she was telling me how for New Year's Eve, she was allowing people to leave the kids with her for like almost like 36 hours for some great price. And she had all these kids and she had to take it down from last year. And she has a home school. She does homeschooling for people. This is what she does. But she did because she's doing it on that capacity with kids and she's feeding them and teaching them curriculum. She was able to do it out of her home, you know, and put a sign outside and all of that. And then same thing with the daycare. But you're just servicing your own personal people in a chair with a mirror, with a shampoo bowl, which is, you know, whatever. But call your state and ask them. They go, you know, when you do that, you're going to open up a whole can of worms because you're going to be um, <clears throat> you're going to be taking something so simple. And, and they're going to just read the book to you. And it's going to be based off of you doing something way bigger than what it is. And then you're going to just put yourself on the radar like that for something that didn't have to be on the radar like that. I don't know what you all were getting at with these questions, but if you want to put yourself on the radar like that, 
you're going to go up in there talking and they're going to think you're trying to open up a salon business that you're just bringing people in off the street and stuff. And yeah, then they're going to start telling you, you need to hire an architect and submit drawings. And then you have to apply for this, this, this. The zoning board is going to have to put you. Yeah, because you, you describe it like you're trying to open up something commercially in a residential area. But you doing your own personal people in your space. You're not touching a structure or anything like that. These are people you personally know. You're not soliciting them off the street or anything like that. These are just, this is just what you do in your own personal space. It's fine. Your license is fine to do it. You're not hurting anyone. You're not touching the structure. I don't, I can't be any more clear with that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you get it? Like, I think y'all overthinking that part of it. But if you want to if you want to go down there and, and, and bust out walls and stuff and put up a partition and then build in, you know, a stage and all this and 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 build a room in the receptionist area. And then I don't know, like maybe then you might want to pull in the city. But now you're about to get in trouble, probably because they're going to ask you to do so much. You find just doing your personal people yourself. You fine. I promise you, you're fine. You license, you fine. You license, you fine. Natasha says she's going um, to bed. Drawing, y'all going way over here. Do, do, do you do nails full time? First off, do you do nails like full time? Like got a whole clientele, and brand everything already set up. I'm just, I'm, I'm wondering. I'm just wondering. Um, creating an LLC draw attention to my home and my at home business from the state. I want to be legit and prepared. Um, <laughs> I think you should move into a salon. Cause you're overthinking it. You, you, you're doing way too much. That's what I'm gonna say. Cause I, I know what I'm talking about, but what I will tell you is that what you do, you can do an LLC if you want to. I don't know. That's not what's going to protect you. If something were to happen, what you need to do is reach out to your insurance person. And they will give you a personal, um, there's a name for it. Like I'm, I'm with state farm and she was, um, she's pulling together something for me now cause I just switched over to them, but you can go through your insurance agent. They will give you, there's there's professional beauty liability insurance. It has nothing to do with the LLC. So that's like you all are mixing stuff up. That's how I know that you all are overthinking this because that's totally different from being liable. You get what I'm saying? Like that's being legit and prepared on over here, but they don't don't mix that up with liability. Liability legit. LLC is just how you're structured. And what you are, how you are reporting your taxes as a limited liability corporation. But that still does not mean anything if you sit there and accidentally chop somebody's damn finger off. Where's your liability insurance? That's two different things. That's why I said I'm, I'm wondering if you all are just throwing out things you heard from different people all over the place. Because it the way you all are putting it together to me is like, have you started with the with building clientele yet? Like, let's do that first. We asking all these what if scenarios and stuff like that. It depends on your it depends on your specific situation. And then once you get your business started and figure out what it looks like and it's, it's really a viable business where you're paying all your bills. And this is what you do for real, for real, for real full time. Then, OK, you might want to start putting some more, um, you know, things more in place. It's OK right now to run as a as a um, sole proprietor. If you want to do LLC, go ahead and do your LLC. If you want to for your name and your business, you can trademark your name. You can do all that. But if you don't have a clientele, don't know how to get a clientele, then what does all this really mean? I'm just saying, I think we are like mixing in things that are like kind of let's let's put that on the right here for right now. Let's talk about this stuff. It's not going to draw attention to your at home business. You could really just like. No, that's. Those are different. That's different. It's, it's a little different. It's a little different. It's part of the equation, but it's it's not really connected, but it's part of the equation. Right. If it's a problem, if you all having all these problems and doubts and stuff, you all give me anxiety. Just go get a suite because you're doing y'all kind of doing too much. <laughs> For real, just go get a suite. Right. Joshua, don't don't do that. Now, now that's what you will mess up. And barbers do that, too. Um, not barbers, but male. Mm, who does that a lot? I've seen it done in salons where these guys would be like talking to all these girls. That always blows up. Don't do it because girls are very finicky and jealous and they want to believe they're the only one. They see you flirting with somebody else. Then they'll stop coming to you. Now you're messing with your money. So that's why you don't do it. 
you see you as the show, please watch it. I plan on watching it next because everybody keeps talking about it. That's the new thing everybody's talking about. Uh, you see, Anthony didn't say anything because Anthony knows that I'm right. All he did was laugh because I know for a fact that Anthony's arm was not up because I, I remember talking about his cheeks and it wasn't the arm wasn't up like that. Yeah, I'm sorry you are. I'm sorry. Because I can answer all these questions and this type of stuff, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to be like, you know what? We need to do a consultation. But my question is, see, it's like a person who said, I'm, I just graduated out of um, nail school. I've just been doing nails in six months, but I'm thinking about trademarking my my name. You don't even know if that's going to be your permanent name. Why are you all the way at trademarking? That's for a person who's established. Are you establishing what you do and know that for a fact that this is going to be your real name before you start putting all this, these you know, all this official paperwork in place. I just got Chicago nails when I moved back to Chicago. In Atlanta, my name used to be something totally different. I had many, many, many other business names before that. And I have another business name for my dropshipping businesses. You get what I'm saying? But I had to make sure that this stuff was going to be right and, and something I really want to, because it costs money to do all that stuff. Don't think it's free. That stuff costs money to file that, that paperwork. What you want to do first is get your business off the ground. If you really want to take it a step from there, if you let's just say you work from home, you want to talk to your insurance agent about that liability insurance. Or you could just look it up, Google it and say, I want to get some professional, you know, you could just say insurance, liability insurance for beauty professionals. There are companies out here. It's like 50 bucks a month, you know, whatever. And that's the next step. We talking about LLCs and all this type of stuff. No. Do you have some liability insurance, especially being new? You cut somebody up and didn't ask if they uh, diabetic or they didn't tell you or they got some type of uh, uh, condition that, you know, and they saying that you caused this. They told nail to fall off. Do you, now they trying to sue you and you did to take you for every now at this point. First of all, do you have liability insurance? Ain't nobody asked me about that at all. Ain't nobody asked about no liability insurance. That's how I know y'all just throwing out stuff that y'all heard from different places don't even really understand how it all fits together. Cause the first step going to be liability insurance. That's really the first thing you want to get when you want to start putting stuff into place. LLC has nothing to do with that person's toenail falling off. They, when you call them, they're going to think you're a crazy person, ma'am. We only handle this and this is for tax purposes. And you know, da, da, da. and then if you were to be sued, you could say, well, you can't sue me. You can sue the LLC, but People got that twisted, too, because depending on the states, that only holds so much. And they can go around that, too, if they got the right attorney. So we overthinking that. That's way over here. <laughs> I know what I'm talking about, but I'm like, why are we, why are we all the way over there? <laughs> y'all, you know what I'm saying? How do I have a pipeless pedicure in my room? My friend just put it in here. What you mean? I bought it. Um, I found that on Craigslist because brand new. That one is sixteen hundred dollars. They sell them. They sell them online. They expensive, brand new. But you can just all you do is just sit it in your room and you plug up the thing, the chair, if you wanted to vibrate. And the liners come in and out. So you just I have to pick the liner up and I have to pour it. Now once I move, I will be running plumbing. But that's nothing. But I will run plumbing, you know, and attach it. But for right now, because. I don't own this space. I'm just doing that. And my landlord, they're perfectly aware of everything that I do. And they were like, wow. And they, they, I just went up there today to get a new parking pass. They, they love it because I don't cause no problems. My, all my neighbors, they don't bother me. I don't cause no problems. So I just bought that off the internet. Natasha, you kind of sound like me jumping the gun a little bit. Just get started. And when you see you need something more, get more. Yeah. We we find reasons to be like, I don't know about this. I don't know about this. She has some of her website. Yeah, I, I put some up on Chicago Beauty Source to give you some options and then it could be financed. Anything up to a thousand dollars can be financed. So I had I I think there's one over a thousand, but I found some other options that are way less expensive. And this really is that's another thing. My friend. Actually, before I moved back, I found it on Craigslist here in Chicago. I reached out to my friend. I said, if I rent a truck and I send you some money, can you go pick this up for me and put it in my aunt's basement? That's what he did. And then when I moved, I stayed with my aunt for a minute to get everything off the ground. And when I moved from her house and the movers came, they took the chair, put it on the truck with the rest of my stuff. And, I, and we put it in here. Ta -da!
Right. So where the water goes after the pedicure is um, their plastic liner. So I literally have to put it in there. It's, it's a, um, a footsie spa. This one holds a footsie spa. So I have the footsie liners. So I replace the liner in between each person. Yep. Yep. You have to carry it and dump it. That's the only thing I don't like. And that's why I said uh, I might keep this as a second one. If I did like a little intimate party at my house, but I'm thinking about selling it once I move. We are reading the requirements of the state. OK. Oh, OK. <laughs> How do you stay up so late? When's your first client? I'm already sleepy. Well, you know, I bowl on Wednesday, so I'm doing one person tomorrow that I'm aware of, but it's a long service and that's all I want to do because I don't like to do too much. I don't know if it's this late. I don't like to do too much on uh, Wednesdays. What's the topic? Well, the topic was being all over the place and I was just saying how, you know, a lot of people have these fancy brands and glitz and glam out here to try to sell you something. Now, while I'm trying to sell you something, it's, it, for real, for real, for real, I want to make sure people are getting it and really getting their career off the ground. And money is not the main motive here. The motive and the thing that makes me happy is hearing people actually putting these things that we talk about into real action. And we got to stop talking ourselves out of stuff. You know? Hey, just stopping in on break. First day of nail school. Okay, thank you for your videos. Gave me the push to go. Yes. Boosh. That's right. Boosh. That's right. You're doing it. You're doing it. You go. It's done. First day done. You're officially a student. That ID, you can actually show that in shows and get a discount. You are official enough to go to shows and be recognized as a professional in training. Yay. Have I done ballerina nail shapes? Yeah. Yep. Coffin is for my clientele. Is, that's the most common one. Coffin. So I guess the other part of this is. I think the other the other video, the live ideas a, a while ago, it kind of made me feel some sort of way. And I came back and said it made me feel some sort of way was when a couple of people came on. And they started complaining about nail salon owners. So I had to break that down. Y'all don't get too caught up on the working from home thing. If you that worked up about work from home, don't work from home. I can't answer your specific question about how it is and where you are and all of that. And are your licenses? It depends. But if, if, if that's really like scary for you like that, don't work from home. That's it. Don't do it. Don't do it. You too paranoid about it. First of all, because you feel like, because you feel like you're doing something illegal. So don't do it. And then, and, and, you know, when you start mentioning stuff like the LLCs and stuff, that lets me know that you're going off a lot of stuff that people are putting in your ear. Um, and it's kind of out of order and way ahead in the game. So I really want you all to focus on building your brand and just go work at a salon right now. Don't even focus your energy too hard on that. You're sitting practicing on your desk right now. Yep. And and you get that other stuff too. So yeah, you you making it happen. See, we we already got all the tools in front of us. I wonder if we can make 420 friendly salons in Illinois now. I'm thinking that might be kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. But let me tell you what I know about that. They only give out so many licenses per year. It's, you can't just go fill out the application. Though the people are bidding, we're bidding on those licenses. So I'm sure it'll be legal in the future. But the I think the real problem is something like that would be getting the license to do it. I don't think those are going to be just sitting around willy nilly. I think those are going to be kind of like cabs, you know, those cab medallions. That's like, oh, it was like a big thing back in the day to have a cab medallion. People were mortgaging their homes and stuff to get a cab medallion in New York City, basically saying like you can officially drive in New York City as a cab driver. People will mortgage their homes to get those. Uber and all that came about. Things have changed. I think that's going to happen with this right now. Those are like that's like. Finding a leprechaun, getting that license. I, I I heard it's a it's a beast and it's expensive and it's only so many available. So that would be a great idea, but we'll see. I say if you can't do 420 friendly salons, what stops you from doing hookah? I have yet to see that. A hookah nail salon. That would be cool. My big nail salon was a karaoke nail salon. That's how I got in all the magazines because we were karaoke. That's what 
put set me aside from the rest and everybody started doing the write-ups. That was one of the things. Uh, Tanisha, do you know of a nail tech who has a nail salon truck in the Chicagoland area? Nope. Chicago just kind of behind on things. They think they're not, but they really are. Nope. What's up with Nail Pro Pasadena in May? Hmm. Oh, I was I was supposed to be going on a trip and I kind of backed out of it and I was like, just keep my deposit because, you know, I'm trying to do so much this year. It's hard for me to even see what I'm fully commit to. My birthday is officially in May, in March and I'm, I know I'm definitely doing something for that because I let it slide back without really doing anything. So I don't know. Can you remind me again? And I'll look into it because I would love to do that. I would love to. I don't I definitely don't think this is going to be the year for me to get a booth for anything right now. I got to I'm, I can, I have to be realistic in what I need to be doing and focus on money. So just like I preach, you can't do everything. So I'm like, uh, what's the, what's the focus this year? So I would like to go. I would like to go. So I can you remind me to look that up, please? I don't know. You made a great point about Getting the shop season professional experience. Yeah, you think you know. And even if you're good at what you do in nails, it's a lot you don't know. I promise you. Because even now, when I if I were to go work in a salon with nail, a lot of nail techs, they would be teaching me things and showing me new ways to do things I already know how to do, faster ways. So it is good to still be around other nail techs at all, especially if you're new. So I, I stick by that even for myself. Tommy said, there's a girl here in Markham. See, I don't know. Cigar salon would be awesome. Now, you said cigar salon. It's funny because it used to be a cigar shop right next to my big salon, and they had problems with the ventilation, for sure. Cigar bars are the hardest thing in the world to control ventilation. You trying to put cigar with nails? Ooh, I don't know. Because he, now that guy worked for the city. He was actually a police officer and he was having problems with his ventilation and the smell. All the tenants above us were complaining. He kept getting to it with the landlord because of the smell and he kept trying to work with the ventilation. That's how I know an easy way to ventilate because he kept trying to like do it himself to ventilate. He finally got it under control, but he had a lot of people in that small space smoking and I could smell it sometimes over in my spot. So we'd be like burning candles and stuff. Cigars, now that's, that's a scent to try to I don't know. I don't know. I'm not talking about that no more. I'm not talking about the work from home thing. That's to me, that's on some negative thinking type crap. I don't have that problem. I'm cool with my people and I'm licensed. I don't know about you all. I don't know. I'm not talking about that no more. I'm not even going to dive into that. Go work at a salon. <laughs> Hmm. Secondly, would you apply the same method of hands to toenails as far as procedures and applications? Also, how do you apply prices to both? How would you apply the same method of hand nails to toenails? Uh, I can't answer that question for you. It's whatever you feel like you should charge. You should look at people in your area and see what they're charging. And do you think your work is better or worse than and then charge accordingly? I don't really fool with toenails too much. I got one client right now that gets toenails put on and um, she pays, but that's my best answer for that because I don't necessarily want to tell you exactly. You should charge 45, you should charge 50. It depends on how good you are, how knowledgeable you are, you know, excuse me. I got you a room cover for one day on me. Stop playing. I'm gonna, girl, I'm gonna look into it, but it's just so much. It's like I have so much on my plate right now. I'm really, I'm not overwhelmed, but I'm just like, it's hard for me to figure out what I'm gonna commit to right now because another opportunity just came up uh, in Atlanta, and that's my birthday weekend. So we're definitely doing that because I never celebrate my birthday. So I don't know. I haven't seen the truck. And that now that right there, that's that's one, you know, here in Chicago, people, people will we're a little behind on stuff, but people will take 
just do what they're going to do. They just will do it. That's the difference between the people who, who really get stuff done, the people who don't. Other people sit up around and talk about it, talk about it, talk about it. Other people just be the one and did it. And even if they hit a snag, they handle the snag if and when it comes. They don't think too hard on, well, what if this happened? What if that happened? You never get it done because it's always a what if and everything. Like being an entrepreneur equal risk taker. I don't know if you've ever seen that before, but that is the truth. So, hmm. I don't know. The, I, I don't know anything about that. I've seen the idea, but I don't. It, it, I don't see a lot of people doing it. It's a great idea to me. It's an RV that's been put together for services. She also is a licensed esthetician. See, I, that's why I say it's a great idea. I don't see people really doing it. I would have thought that everybody was doing it. I've seen like two barbers. I don't think they were here either, but I've seen articles about two barbers. But other than that, I don't know. Oh, okay, Tommy. I checked her website. It was and it was up. Yeah, I don't know. I can't pay attention. There's so many people popping in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out. That's why I don't focus too hard on stuff because I'm focused on what it takes to stay in long, long, long term. So kudos to everybody who's doing their own thing. But I, I'm, I kind of be like focused on what I'm doing. I see what's happening on a general broad kind of scale to keep up. But I don't really like, oh, what are they doing today? What are they not? I kind of don't. There's so many people. I said that in another live. People are like, you know, so I'm like, nope, 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 because I just be too busy doing my own thing. It's good to know, though. Chicago is catching up, but they still kind of behind on a lot of things to me just because I've lived in other states before. So, hmm. I don't know. I don't know. So, you guys, I don't know what to tell you. I got clients that do what I do. I got a lot of clients that are hairstylists. I got clients that have homes and they have their, they do have their whole salon set up in their basement. If it's too risky for you, God dang on it, do not freaking do it. If you think it's risky, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. And people who are getting in trouble is because they were doing something they shouldn't have been doing it. In the way they should, in the way they should have been doing it. Because why don't other people get in trouble for what they do? I'm just saying, why don't nobody? I don't know about that. I don't want to go too deep into that because that's negative to me. My channel, I said it. So I don't know. I know a lot of people, but I, I don't. I don't. I don't want you all to get too caught up in all these legalities and paperwork because I want you all to focus on getting your business at least started. You all be talking yourself out of things before you even get it off the ground. That's terrible. That is terrible. That's really bad. Hell, most of the people I know in the industry at some point, they, they either in a salon, they be like, oh, I'm back home now. Oh, okay, I'm in a salon. I'm back home now. And I know one girl, she just started coming to me. She was like, I left because I didn't want those people coming to my new house. I didn't want these new people knew I know where I live. But before then, she was at, at her old place. They were coming to her house. I'm like, mm -hmm. I don't know what, what you all want me to say. I don't know why you all think that's so illegal. But I'm not going to go too deep into that. If you think that, go into a salon and you won't have to worry about it. Go pay them people six, seven hundred, a thousand dollars a for it. Go ahead and do it. Go ahead. So is there anything else? Because we are at two and a half hours and it's kind of late. I still got a clip. No. 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 Okay, well... I hope that I answer questions. I'm going to go ahead and go. I'll see you all in the next live.